Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the West. A star-studded marquee today. Dynamic Rangers ace Yu Darvish is winless, but cast in his third appearance of the season. And AL superstar Mike Trout takes a spotlight against his division rivals. Act three of our series is on the bill in a matinee from Tinseltown. Welcome to Texas Rangers Baseball, presented by AT&T. Talk so much about the sunshine in Southern California, but an oddly overcast afternoon as we get ready for game three of this three-game series. Lined up outside so they can get inside and maybe have a catch with the best young player in the game. Hey, great to be with you, folks. Welcome in. I'm Dave Raymond with CJ Nikowski. Whatever his name is, <laughs> as we get ready for this one this afternoon, a chance for the Rangers to win this series. And they give the ball to their ace today, who's been a little bit of a hard luck pitcher so far. Yeah, some bad luck for you, Darvish, last time out, but he threw the ball extremely well. And the fastball was strong, and the slider was strong, and those are the things that you look for out of you, Darvish. And what he got last time out was 11 swings and misses, much better than what we saw in his first start. Like I mentioned, the velocity really good, but the life on the pitches is what you look for in you, Darvish. Now, how about his first ever pickoff also in his last game? So things looking up right now for you, Darvish, despite the fact that he hasn't had that first win just yet. And this is going to be a, a, a shocking bit of news, but if he's going to beat the Angels, he's going to have to beat Mike Trout. Oh, one of the best in the game and a guy that has had a lot of success against you, Darvish. This will be a lot of fun to watch. Four home runs for Mike Trout against you, Darvish. That is the most of any player. But on the flip side, you Darvish has struck out Mike Trout 13 times, also more than any other hitter he has ever faced. Well, two of the game's biggest names and most fantastic stars going head to head today in the rubber game of this three-game series. Rangers hoping that the big bats will continue. Leading Major League Baseball in home runs, we return Emily Jones with more on the resurgent bat of Elvis Andrews. AT&T Internet. Visit AT&T.com slash keep calm to learn more. And by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Well, a big game this afternoon for the Rangers. Jeff Bannister hoping to get a victory today, win this series as the road trip will continue to Seattle beginning tomorrow night. Rangers Angels here in Anaheim. Great to be with you as we check in for the first time this afternoon with Emily Jones. 
Well, Dave, Elvis Andrews swinging a very hot bat to start the season. It really goes all the way back to last season if you look closely at, at it. I asked Elvis today, what if anything has changed? And he said, the only thing that's really changed is my approach. I'm not trying to take a pitch just for the sake of taking a pitch. I'm not trying to work a count. They're throwing me fastballs earlier, and so I'm hitting them. He said, the one thing I've got to watch out for, I've got that high leg kick early on in the count, so it, it kind of you know, lends pitchers to uh, think that he might start swinging early. So he said he might try to scale back that on that just a bit. However, if they do make that adjustment to him, he will then make the adjustment to work more pitches uh, on the off-speed stuff and get on base more. But power going early for Elvis Andrews. He'll try to continue it here in the finale in Anaheim. We'll have first pitch and lineups coming up next. Afternoon. Final game of this three-game set. So we take a look at the Southwest starting lineup today. Texas Rangers three and five, looking for back-to-back -back wins for the first time this year. Carlos Gomez up top per usual. Mike Napoli in that cleanup spot, showing signs again last night that he's starting to find the stroke. Interesting note: Robinson Chirinos doing the catching today, batting eight with Darvish on the mound and Jerson Profar getting with the start in left field. So all set to go. Gomez stands in, and the first pitch from Ricky Nolasco is hit sharply foul for strike one. Now Gomez, the on base at 270. That's a number that we'll keep an eye on as the season progresses. He's done a nice job out of that leadoff spot, but he's going to have to get on more often. This ball hit well out to center field and carrying to the rock pile. And Gomez has hit another home run, his third of the season. That's a good start. Well, it certainly didn't take long for Carlos Gomez, who was all of a sudden heating up after game one, striking out four times. But it's an old story now for Carlos Gomez as he seemed locked in and the aggressiveness still there. And I said that first slow game hasn't slowed him down. And this is a 1-0 pitch that is sitting right in the middle of the plate. And looks like we saw in that Mike Napoli home run. You started to wonder a little bit, is that going to hang up in the air and give Mike Trout a chance? But the answer to that, fortunately, was no. Now Chu batting second today. And he's been getting on at a real nice clip, 333. Velasco falls behind 2-0. See the numbers from this season and the home runs now go ahead and tick that up one to four. It's early on, but a little bit of an issue here in 11 and two thirds innings. The four home runs allowed by Nolasco. A high strike call. It's two and one to two. Yesterday, two was one for four. And the 
take something off speed there for a strike. It's two and two. Every Ranger had a hit in yesterday's win. And kind of surprising at how rare that is is a breaking ball swung on and missed and Chu down swinging. Take a quick look here at the Angels defense. Cameron Maben, the big addition this past offseason. Not a lot going on as far as changes. Danny Espinosa as well, new to this Angels defense, but it's pretty much just been left field and second base. You see the two time MVP Mike Trout center. So Ricky Nolasco loves his slider. I would, I would think that coming in, that would be the pitch you'd be keyed on if you're a Rangers hitter. And first pitch a ball to Nomar Mazzara. Yeah, one that he throws a lot, about 33% of the time. So, yes, you will see that a bunch. And it's actually more of a four-seam fastball than a two. Sit around 91 miles an hour. It's not an exceptionally hard throw, but this is a guy who's had a Pretty good, consistent career. Run into, ran into a little bit of trouble with the Minnesota Twins and found himself moved over here to this Angel organization a year ago and actually pitched pretty well for this club down the stretch. Off the plate, it's 2-1 and one to Nomar Mazzara. I was mentioning that yesterday, all nine starters for the Rangers had at least one hit. First time that has happened this year. Last year... It happened on the road anyway for the Rangers on only two occasions. So it is it is not a real common occurrence that everybody gets a hit, but that was the case last night. Rangers picked up their third victory of the year, improved to three and five, and now looking for their first win streak of the season. 2-2, two -two, and it's a full count to Nomar Mazzara. I think it is a rare feat, but it's one of those things that you expect this offense to hit. Not necessarily that every guy is going to get a hit throughout the lineup in every game, or even that's going to happen very much. But the idea that this offense is going to be here consistently, it is a deep lineup. What you like about that is if you get a couple of guys that are struggling, there's enough big bats that you feel like you can count on. Payoff pitch to Mazzara, and he'll earn another one. Good lengthy at bat here for Nomar, who's fourth in the American League coming into play today the average at 394 and he is one of four players in the game today tied for the American League lead in RBIs he has nine the last goes 3-2 and he gets Mazar swinging two away Well, already a home run today for the Rangers last night. Mike Napoli was the first of the game. This was in the second inning. Yeah, Nap, really nice job here on the opposite field home run. He had said after the game that it tells him that his swing is in the right place, that his timing is right, that he's got his legs where he wants them. It's a big part of his swing and making sure that everything is kind of sinking and working together. So he was certainly pleased just with the result of that at bat, but more importantly, where the swing is and the comfort level. It seems to me he might be primed to, to get a little bit hot right here after we've seen him take a couple of really good at bats last night. First offering from Nolasco is very high. And the night before, right? Getting robbed, of course, of the mm -hmm. home run, the ball that he hit to center field that Mike Trout brought back, or, or pretty close, borderline, either top of the wall would have been a home run, either well, it was well struck. One and one the count. Well, let's see, he's had multiple hits in each of the last two games, and even with the home run taken away. And he hasn't struck out in either f the first two games of this series. So making very solid contact. And a hole here, one and two. And his two home runs this year have come in the last four games. So some signs that Napoli starting to settle in a little bit. He's been in that cleanup spot now in nine straight games. Stays alive as that one in and out of the glove of Perez. Back-to-back -back breaking balls from Ricky Nolasco. Mike Napoli out in front of that one a little bit. And again, even though the velocity isn't very hard, what he has set himself up to do is potentially in this one-two count elevate the fastball, make it look a little bit harder if you elevate it, but also after following the breaking ball. This one lifted out into short right field. Coming in, Calhoun. And that will end the inning. Not before Carlos Gomez gets the Rangers on the board, swinging a red-hot bat right now. 
dead center for his third of the year. In the top of the first, Rangers jump out early this afternoon. Let's take a look at the Los Angeles Angels. Now six wins, three losses. And Yunel Escobar up top, Cole Calhoun. Had a big year last year against the Rangers. Batting second. And it gets sticky there in the middle of the order. Hamilton Simmons, another guy who had a big year last year against the Rangers, batting fifth. Carlos Perez does the catching today, rounds things out. Just back to switch hitting Danny Espinosa. Take a look at you, Darvish, so far. Lacking that win. We mentioned it in the open. Don't be fooled by those walks. The strikeout to walk ratio, maybe not exactly where he wants it yet, but last game threw the ball a lot better. We're kind of slowly seeing the fastball command come back. It was a little bit of an issue in a couple of starts in spring training and maybe here early on. Always the thing to keep an eye on with you, Darvish. It's that fastball command, not even just strikes, but within the zone. Well, he's ready to get going in his first pitch. He's fouled right back at us. Ooh. Look out. No, thank you. That's <laughs> you, Gooby. Mark have it. it was kind of right in between both of us, and I don't react well to that. Yeah, I flinched a little bit and got scared, and Gooby kind of gave a half effort yeah. trying to save us. It's, I'm going to get hit for sure one time, there's no doubt. Yeah, that's a good ballpark for it, too. Check swing. He did not go, so one and one to Yunel Escobar. Escobar hitting 405. He is third in the American League. What a start for him. At 450 on base, sixth best mark in the American League. So he's set the table quite well for the Angels in this early portion of the season. Now the count one and two. Now, Darvish has had good success against Janelle Escobar, though, over the years. Faced him 15 times, retired him 13 of those times. And a swing and a miss. His first strikeout of the afternoon. How about today's Rangers defense is delivered to you by New Braunfels Convention and Visitors Bureau. And you mentioned left field jerks and Profar out there tonight. This has been... A pretty steady lineup that we have seen the rest of the way, with the exception, of course, Robinson Torinos getting an opportunity behind the plate. I got to think that probably has something to do with the fact that it's nine games in a row on this road trip, trying to spread out Jonathan Lucroy's uh, rest time when he could get it, especially a day game. A lot of times, day game followed by a night game. Give your starter a day off. And so Torinos in there today, guiding you, Darvish, through this Angels lineup. Well, a strikeout to get things started. And Cole Calhoun hits this rocket right past first base and into right field. So a base hit, first base runner of the afternoon for the Angels. You talk about not having a lot of room 
to get a ball between your first and second base. A little bit of a shift here for Cole Calhoun. Jumping on a first pitch bat, fastball, puts a good swing on it, but there was hardly any room over there. You got to hit that ball hard to get it through between Mike Napoli and Rudnett Odor, and that's exactly what he did. Now Mike Trout. So the Angels get what they want, which is to say they have somebody on base ahead of this guy. He was an absolute menace. What you didn't see in that line was the four doubles that Trout has had, along with the three home runs. And he takes a strike from Darvish. Th those four doubles, that's second in the American League behind Mitch Moreland, who, who has seven already for the Red Sox. Darvish yanks it off the plate, one and one. I'm going to take a look at what Darvish has been featuring so far this year. We know that the repertoire runs really deep, but it is still a lot of fastballs and cutters. You're going to see that about 70% of the time. And then that slider, that is a great finish pitch that you Darvish has when the fastball command is good and strong within the zone and he gets ahead he's usually finishing hitters with a really good slider keeping an eye on Calhoun over there at first who has not attempted to steal yet this year We're working against Mike Trout. Two and one. And there's not a lot of pitches when you look at Mike Trout going back to 2016 that you can say, okay, he's really weak on this one. Here's a place where you can exploit Mike Trout. Now, yes, you can elevate the fastball. It's one where you have an opportunity against righties, especially up and away. Just a 136 batting average going back to the beginning of 2016 on fastballs that are up and away. But you better not miss middle. You better not miss down because that is where Mike Trout's power lies. Take a look and see that 136. But I mean, the 520 is absurd. The 311 is pretty absurd. When you think about him facing a right handed pitcher, this is against right handed pitchers. So you're always caught kind of when in doubt or taught when in doubt, go down and away with your fastball. Not the case necessarily against Mike Trout. I don't even count at two and two. So Calhoun is on. And Darvish, that was a big pitch right there. And the Angels will run a little bit, and Darvish, a guy who has had trouble holding base runners. We talked about his first pickoff in his last start. But teams do run on him. And he'll come to Trout, that one in the dirt, it's a full count. He goes with the curveball, that one at 77 miles an hour. Mike Trout doesn't offer at that pitch. And when you get to a two strike count, we'll see a replay here on the breaking ball from you Darvish good movement just a little bit too far down in the dirt not enough to entice Mike Trout to go out of the strike zone but two two counts three two counts against Mike Trout again going back to last year the off speed pitch a pretty good one to use he is a very good fastball there that time asked for and granted back there at home plate Paul Emmel our plate umpire today Trout will reset. Let's see if Calhoun takes off on the pitch here, three and two. He is going, and that's ball four. So two men on. He doesn't get Trout and now has to deal with Albert Pujols. Pujols, another guy who, of course, you respect. You respect everything he has done in his career. The numbers don't jump out at you yet this year, although the seven RBIs, fairly impressive. Low average and only the one home run so far. But you always have to be careful with him. And he's gotten to Darvish a couple of times. Two home runs off of him. He's seven for 29 against Darvish in his career. We, we've 
we've referenced it already in this series, but one thing that can work when you're playing the Angels, at least so far, has been that they will hit into double plays. Albert Pujols, you know, example number one. He is sure. a guy you would think is oftentimes a candidate for double play grounder. But without a doubt, it's just a matter of you, Darvish, generating that ground ball the best, day, the best way that he can. That more often than not going to be the good hard slider or the fastball down with some good movement, some good life on it. Beating Albert with it, he's certainly not going to beat out. Or we know he's not going to use his legs to beat out a double play. So without a doubt, he is a, a really good candidate here for Darvish. Calhoun and Trout out there. And it's one and two on Pujols. That's really good life down and in like that. We see from you, Darvish, at 94 miles an hour. And at this point now, you take, not that you're ever not trying to get a double play, but in the one-two count, you're going for the strikeout, whatever that spot you think it is. An Albert Pujols that you, Darvish, and Robinson Torinos can get to with a runner in scoring position. You do what you can to try to get the punch out. He struck out Escobar earlier in the inning. Long look in. Darvish and Chirinos may be having a little trouble, and they'll get together. And Darvish ha has been fairly deliberate in this first inning. That is the first time in the regular season that these two have been paired up. Big, powerful, right-handed superstar, you Darvish. It's two and two. And Darvish, 6'5", 215 pounds, and we know he throws hard. He has electric stuff. His, his slider is as good as there is in baseball. And he's always been a bit of an oddity in that he's always inventing. I mean, he's, he's got seven really good pitches, and he's always looking for more. 2-2, and a bouncer slowly hit to the left side. Gallo has one play. Great job to stay with it and get Pujols for out number two. Yeah, I think Joey Gallo probably thinking about two potentially, but because it was kind of that slow chopper, he knew he was going to have to be very quick, and he bobbled that a little bit on the exchange and, and made the right play to kind of recoup here and make sure that he got the out at first. So watch that bounce, and then that second one jumped on him a little bit quick. Took a Kind of a glance over at second base, but realized he did not have a play. Did a really good job of making sure that it didn't turn into a disaster. A lot of times a younger player will panic a little bit and try to make too much happen or force that throw to second base. But Joey Gallo makes the right decision, take the out at first, and try to make too much out of a play at that point. That was just another way in which we have seen him really handle himself well. The results have been there in one form or another. You can measure those easily enough, but... There's been so much talk about how he's been carrying himself on the field, off the field. Really pretty, pretty level-headed, pretty cool on that play right there. Is Andleton Simmons off to a very good start for the Angels. Simmons eighth in the American League with that 3.44 average. And he's done a good job of working counts, four walks against just two strikeouts for him. Just trying to work around a couple of base runners. And Simmons may have helped him out. Chopper up the middle. Andrews in time. And the inning is over. So the Angels leave two in scoring position. Rangers with the 1 0 lead, and Rubnet Odor will lead things off in the second.
banquet, timeless moment. Here you go, this was Pudge's nine RBI game. Today, back in 1999 at the King Dome, with four for five, had 10 total bases. A couple of home runs. Rangers winning that one, <laughs> 15 to six. How about the reaction there for Pudge? And he was probably upset. That was the last year, right, if memory serves. That was 1999, right? Yep, said yep. last year of the King Dome. Probably was a little bit upset that they took that ballpark down. It was not an easy place to pitch by any means. And obviously, Pudge having quite the day there up in Seattle. Meanwhile, it's a one nothing game here. Rupnet Odor leads things off in the second inning. Nineteen ninety nine. It's an American League record, an American League record for RBIs in a game by a catcher. One and one on Odor hitting two fifty eight. Three home runs, eight RBIs. Odor was the last of the Rangers last night to collect a hit, oh, and he shoots oh, this one by third. Wide open down there, and he has a leadoff single in the second. Ricky Nolasco cannot be happy about this at all. What a tremendous job by Rugnet Odor taking advantage of the shift, and, and pitchers are open to the shift more and more. But I tell you, this is the part that doesn't make sense to me. If you're going to leave the left side open the way that you just did, why are you going to pitch him away? Right. Ricky Nolasco executed his pitch perfectly, and he got weak contact exactly the way that he anticipated. But there was nobody there because the shift was on it. So one part about the shift that can be a little bit frustrating, if you're going to pitch a left-handed hitter like that away, but everybody else is playing him to pull, you get a little bit annoying. I gotta believe for a guy like Rick Velasco in that situation, and credit Ruben Odor as well for not trying to do too much with that outside pitch. So we keep an eye on Rubnet now, who has attempted one steal so far. It was unsuccessful. Elvis Andrews. Well, here's the guy who just keeps moving up in the batting order, now batting sixth this afternoon. He's second in the American League with a slugging percentage of 800. So Nolasco paying attention to Odor, but the guy who could really hurt him right here is standing at home plate. <laughs> Went in there for a strike. Andrews with the three home runs, all solo home runs. Hit one yesterday in the second inning in a two for four night. And homered in the third inning on Tuesday night. Another multi hit game. He's just been locked in. How about tonight's, or I should say today's, TXU Energy Power Player to Watch? And there he is, Elvis Andrews. And we keep kind of using that date going back to. September 1st, but he has been locked in to see the seven home runs, tied for third on the team, and a home run every 16.1 at bats. Now, as strong as that has been, I don't know if that would continue or your expectations should be there necessarily for Elvis Andrews, but it has been a very nice run going back to September of last year. It's just pull hard down to third. Nice sliding stop by Escobar, and they'll get Odor at second. A pretty nice defensive play by Escobar. Uh, without a doubt, this ball was hit pretty hard down the line. Good swing by Elvis Andrews. Nice backhanded play by Escobar. And play was close, but he did a nice job jumping up, turning, and making pretty strong throw. A little bit down in the dirt there, but easy to handle. So Andrews replacing Odor at first. And now Joey Gallo. Gallo was batting eighth yesterday. Had the two run triple in the fifth inning. Also walked. 
fact, now with five walks this year, look at the on-base percentage up at 323. That, that's a much more important number than the 192 average. Especially if he's going to give you some power and drive in runs. I think it really speaks to how well Joey Gallo is seeing the ball and showing a little bit more patience. Pitch recognition, all things that come along with experience, especially at the big league level. You can put up numbers all day long at the AAA level. You're just not going to see the same level of pitching day in and day out when you're down in the minor leagues. And so we're seeing incremental improvements here for Joey Gallo. And as I mentioned last night, the consistent playing time has been a big part of that as well. Alaska, much like Darvish. Really contemplative between pitches. And out of the plate, that one is outside. It's a really nice way of saying he's working slow. He is. <laughs> a lot of thinking today. There's a lot of thinking going on. Two late nights out here on the West Coast and turn around for an early game this afternoon. And maybe guys just a little foggy. A little bit outside. A ball. Emil was given a little off the outside corner in the first inning, especially with left-handers up there. And it looks like Nolasco trying to maybe take advantage of that or see what the, the extreme boundaries of that might be today. But he has fallen behind Gallo 2-1 and one as a result. Runner going. A swing and a miss, evens the count, but the throw to second, not in time, and Elvis Andrews with his first stolen base of the season. Well, I think clearly a hit and run in a 2-1 count. And Jeff Bannister and the Rangers trying to get something going as you see Joey Gallo do the right thing. You got to swing at this pitch regardless, even though the ball was down. But because it was the breaking ball, it takes a little bit longer to get to the plate. You see Elvis looking in the entire time for me. That tells me, without a doubt, a hit and run. Does a good job of getting in there. A lot of times on the hit runs, you're not looking for the big jump off the bag, and you'll see guys get thrown out. But Elvis does a good job of making sure that didn't happen. Breaking ball just misses, and it's a full count now to Gallo. You got to believe that it's only eight games into the year. But would anybody have bet that Joey Gallo would be leading the Rangers in walks? No. After eight games, no, nobody, right? I mean, it's just, it's been tremendous so far. He's done a really nice job. And like you said, ignore that batting average. So far, so good here for Joey Gallo. Three-two pitch. Ooh, Ooh. And he takes strike three. Man, tough break for Joey Gallo. It's borderline pitch. Our pitch tracks had it just off the plate. And that's the part that's going to get a little frustrating, where a young player will get tested because patience has been. Something that he's working on, and so he feels like he knows the strike zone and sees it well, and he believes that pitch was a ball, and I think he probably has a pretty good argument. It's borderline, and you can say, well, pitch is close, full count, two strikes. Young hitter, maybe you should be going after it. That's the part that can, that can get to you a little bit. you got to be a little bit careful getting out of your game plan just because maybe there was a bad call made on a 3-2 count. Well, two down now, and Robinson Chirinos will take one low. Robbie getting the start today. He has the home run, three RBIs. A limited time so far for Chirinos. Two for six. And hits this one the other way. Down the right field line, could be trouble. Drops in, fair ball, and bounces up into the seats. And that will be a book double. So Andrews will score from second, and it's 2 nothing Rangers. That's the thing of beauty right there, to hit a ball down the line, get that nice hop. It was going to be down anywhere regardless. But a good approach here by Robinson Chirinos. Look at the head down. He's thinking, looking for something out over the plate to drive the other way. Cole Calhoun has no chance. Getting to it, that is a quality at bat from Robinson Torinos with the runner in scoring position. Doing anything he can to get him in. So, two runs in early. Once again, the Rangers, the early innings, doing a great job. And the throw to second gets away. 
Torinos scrambling to third, and he's in there. So an error on the throw by Nolasco. And now Torino's just 90 feet away. Interesting here, an aggressive move. I don't think Robinson Torino's necessarily going anywhere. This might have been a pre-planned play, or couldn't tell in the replay whether or not it was the open glove where you get it from the shortstop to kind of indicate that he's going to cover the bag. We know that Andrewton Simmons is aggressive as a defender. Ricky Nolasco also pretty aggressive. You go back to last year, he's got three picked off runners. Those are at first base with his fifth best. Players. Line shot, base hit. Chirino scores. And Profar drives in the third run of the game. Rangers adding on with two out in the second inning. Boy, good for Profar, too. Had the hit yesterday, his first of the year. That was good for an RBI. Same thing again today. Tell you what, back-to-back -back really strong approaches here from Jerks and Profar, Robinson, Chirinos. Not all at-bats are created equal. There's certain times where you can get big and maybe think about trying to drive the ball out of the ballpark when you have a runner in scoring position with two outs. A lot of times you're going to catch a pitcher trying to get ahead, maybe not giving you his best, working you away, thinking you could get aggressive. But both guys just staying middle of the field, opposite field. You'd love to see that from the bottom of your order. Now turned over for Gomez, who homered last inning. He has three long balls already this year. This one hit a mile high in the air on the right side of the infield. Marte drifting on it and makes the play, and it ends the inning. The Rangers tack on a couple more. Robinson Chirinos with a big two-out hit, a double. <laughs> they also came in to score on the best. This afternoon, great start to this one. You Darvish left a couple of minutes scoring position in the first inning, and today's Kubota power stats. How about that? 11.8 strikeouts per nine innings in his career against the Angels. Of course, that's. I mean, look with Darvish, he averages better than 10 strikeouts per nine against 12 of the 14 American League teams. So. Yeah, he, he punches out a lot of dudes. Without a doubt, one of the best in the game, historically one of the best. We talked about that a bunch this year and what he had done through his first 100 starts of his career coming into 2017, the highest strikeout rate of any starter all time. And I've talked about this a bunch too. What has been so impressive after watching him pitch in Japan for a couple of years when I was there and then see him come here and actually watch his strikeout rate go up. Got not a little bit, like significantly better. Nearly three per nine has been the increase since he's been here in the States. Two and O to Cameron Mabin. And the point you were making 
we were talking about it last night a little bit, which I thought was interesting, was in Japan, the, the really good contact hitters, right? Without a doubt. That's part of it. But I didn't think we'd see that big of a jump from him. More contact hitters, shorter to the ball, a lot of turf field, so you get a lot of guys hitting the ball on the ground and running. It's a little bit of a, a different game, a little bit more of a small ball feel. There's still power hitters there, but not nearly to the degree that we have here in the States. And the big one, too, is just the trend here we have with our power hitters that are taking monster swings regardless of count. You don't see that a ton over there. The automatic strike there to Cameron Mabin makes it 3-1, and one, a 261 hitter. Darvish tries to battle his way back. And that one is high, so he loses Mabin, his second walk in today's game. And Darvish, he came in having surrendered eight walks, which was most in the American League, so that's becoming an issue. He now has as many walks as strikeouts in the early part of this season. This is third start of the year. I don't think this is something that's necessarily going to hold. There's no way. I mean, especially at that rate. You look at that. You know, our Fox tracks tells us you know, that's a high strike. And you know, those things are not always perfect, but they're pretty accurate. And I would agree just by watching that pitch over the plate. It looked like it certainly was a high strike. And something our commissioner, Rob Manfred, has pushed for a little bit. He actually wants to eliminate some of the bottom of the zone and wants to see that strike zone come up a little bit. Marte swings and misses at strike one. Let's take a look again at that pitch. Yeah, and I think, you know, if you take a look at it, watch the belt and watch where this is. I mean, I mean a little bit above the belt, but certainly for me, it's in the strike zone. Not for you, you're a <laughs> former pitcher. I mean, listen, he could bounce it up there. I'm like, hey, where was that pitch? <laughs> yes, old habits die hard. 0-2 oh, to Jeffrey Marte. But here's the thing, I think... With Darvish, what we saw in the first two starts. The fastball command was just kind of so-so. We can't really get on him for that one, but the percentage right now is pretty strong. 64% so far through this game for his fastball for strikes. That's a good number. That's where we want to see him uh, consistently. So far, it's actually been the slider uh, that has been out of the zone a little bit more than usual here today. But again, to me, Darvish looks really strong. What we've seen through spring training. I think he's poised to have a huge year. Takes a look at his runner, Mabin. And wants to keep him close. One strikeout so far today for Darvish. The first battery faced. You got Yunel Escobar. His third start of the year. And, and we mentioned it earlier, a little hard luck for Darvish in his first two starts. There's ball one. And he appeared to have a win under his belt opening day in a game that got away late. Bullpen couldn't hang on. And then his last time out, just no run support. And it's going to happen. There are going to be, I don't care how good your bullpen is or when they're struggling, where your starter's going to turn out good outings and you're not going to get wins. It happens, and then there's going to be times where your bullpen picks you up where you can barely get through five, but they keep it close and give you that opportunity we say spit the hook, right? Get rid of that loss in the, in the days that you don't have your best stuff. So there's a, back, a little bit of back and forth. So far in this season, it's been the shorters, the starters, excuse me, that have kind of come up on the short end of the stick. That's all the numbers right there in his last start against the Oakland A's. Went six innings, runner going. This one lifted high in the air. Out to right field. Maben seemed lost at second. He's late getting back, but the throw oh. is high. And a missed opportunity at a double play. Mazzara had Cameron Maben dead to right. Wow. Whoa. I was really confused watching Maben. A lot going on here. Well, first of all, Cameron Maben's taking off. Now look more of a straight steal than a hit and run. And he did not know where the ball was. I'm not sure if Elvis deked him or not. And then I think you saw no more Mazzara's eyes light up and realize he had an easy double play. And he got a little bit aggressive. And unfortunately, over through this ball, and Mike Napoli's not catching that. Shaquille O'Neal is not catching that. I don't think anybody would have been able to get to that one, but a little bit of uh, maybe overexcitement there from Nomar Mazar as he saw what should have been probably an easy double play. Maybe, meanwhile, the luckiest guy in the building right now. That, those are 
really embarrassing moments when a play gets away from you like that, but he is back safely at first. He's going again. The throw from Torinos. That one is high. Out into center field and a great deke by Elvis Andrews to keep him at second. How about that? Andrews holding the tag on him without the ball. It's a great play. Now, I don't know if he could put it on him necessarily, you know, kind of keeping him down, but Cameron may have been absolutely believed that Elvis Andrews had this uh, had this ball in his hand. Now watch the throw, he got no chance. He's going to be safe as this ball is way in the air, but Elvis didn't even bother trying to go for that throw. It was so high, and that's really good recognition and reaction, right? You think about your first instinct is going to be, can I catch this ball, right? Elvis is trying to receive the ball at the bag. He normally would start jumping up and saying, i got to stop this ball from going in the outfield. He immediately realized he had zero chance of catching it, and so he just pretended that the throw was on the money. That's a great job. Well, a pitch in there for a strike to Espinosa, and it's one and one. Espinosa batting eight today, switch hitter. Comes in at 194. The guy who has a little thump in that bat. He's driven in nine runs. Maven with a walk in the stolen base. And the count now one and one on Espinosa. Espinosa doesn't hit for a, for a high average. Did not last year anyway with the Washington Nationals. But he did hit 24 home runs last year. Now the count one and two. In fact, Espinosa, he's, he's seen a, a really nice ascension in terms of the power numbers the last couple of years. 14, 15, and 16 with the Nationals. One, two pitch, and there's a swinging strike three. Espinosa is out. Good job by Chirinos to finish it off two away before Carlos Perez comes to bat. Let's check in with Emily Jones. Well, Dave, Tony Beasley taking very close attention to everything, paying very close attention, I should say, to everything going on in the infield. He was watching video this morning, going through uh, every play from the night before. Said he wants his guys to be engaged, and he's not watching just those plays where errors are made or plays aren't made. He's watching every play uh, to see what his guys are doing, how they're reacting. He said the infield has six errors so far. They could have none because they've made the hard plays. The errors have come on those easy plays. So really trying to get those guys to focus and make those routine plays. Yeah, thanks, Emily. It makes a lot of sense as far as what Tony is actually looking at. As we see this wild pitch get away, Cameron Maven will walk down to third base. But a lot of times that is the case. It's, you know, the routine play. If guys are a little bit too comfortable, maybe they're not moving their feet enough. And so that's what Tony is keeping an eye on. Sometimes you have too much time to make a throw. You catch the replay here. Darvish actually trying to go middle in on this ball and is a finishing in the left-hander's batter's box. Robinson Chirino said no chance of getting to that one. The infield back. Perez one for six this year in his limited at bats. It's now a ball and a strike on him. Gonna be the catching job tonight, batting or rather this afternoon and batting night. This is an Angels offense that has gotten off to an outstanding start. Darvis just misses in. And you can see by his body language, he, he kind of wanted that one. And Robinson held it there, too, because he probably thought that ball crossed the plate. Even though you Darvish was trying to go away with that slider, ended up being a missed spot on the inside. And just because the catcher's not sitting there, doesn't mean it's not a strike, but it can be a difficult call to get. There's a strike, and it's two and two. Well, this Angels offense, they, uh, they lead the American League right now in team batting average at 282. But they're second in runs, second in hits, total bases, on base percentage, slugging percentage. So they've done a lot of things right. And even though the Rangers score more runs per game, the Rangers have been doing that with the home run.
Darvish gets strike three called on the outside corner. Carlos Perez, third strikeout victim this afternoon for you, Darvish. So the big right-hander goes back to his old friend. Strikes out Espinosa. It's Carlos Perez. And we've played two. Leading the Angels three to nothing. Shin Su Chu off to a relatively slow start. And it was interesting. I had a conversation with him in the clubhouse yesterday. He said, you know what? I never play well in April. I don't even know what the numbers are. And I said, well, let me look them up for you. So turns out he does play pretty well in April. 271 average over the course of his career. So he's off to a bit of a slow start. 222 so far. Uh, that bodes well for what he should do traditionally or historically in the next couple of weeks. And uh, when I told him his numbers weren't that bad in April, he said, oh, good. So that means I'll do well here pretty soon, guys. <laughs> it's amazing how you can talk yourself into thinking something is worse than it is. This game is really great for that. And for Shin Chu Chu, maybe feeling that, you know, April's just haven't been that good to him. Now, I guess you could say it hasn't even really been his worst month. He did it 264, has hit 264 over the course of his career in the month of June. But the fact that 264 is his worst, worst month, Tells you everything you know about Shinshu Chu and the consistency that he has had throughout his career. He has feasted on September pitching in his career. 327 with a 434 on base percentage throughout his career. Hits this one out to left field, drops in, base hit. And so Chu is on to start the third inning. That is five hits already this afternoon for the Rangers. Good job here by Shin Chu Chu. That ball is supposed to be in a little bit further. So good job keeping the hands in. Well, base runner now for Nomar Mazzara. Nomar struck out in the first inning. Nolasco working from the stretch fires one right in there for strike one. All five of the Rangers hit so far today have come off of fastballs against Ricky Nolasco. You can start to wonder, trying to maybe change the usage a little bit, start using the off speed a little bit more. The Rangers have been all over his fastball. Sure not going in the count one and one. He's taking a good secondary lead down there at first base. Mazzara. Of course, came up last year. He made his debut here in Anaheim and has subsequently really hit the ball well against the Angels. 388 average. OPS well over 1,000 against the oh. Angels and hammers this ball 
Deep out to right field. That one carrying well, and it's gone. Mazzara's homered again. This one counts for two, and the Rangers lead 5-0. Well, right on cue for Nomar Mazzara, who has been red hot this entire season and very comfortable in the three spot. But another fastball here from Ricky Nolasco with just 89 miles an hour. And again, he tried to go in the same way he did to young, uh, excuse me, to Shinchu Chu. This one was left up over the plate. Hands extended and crushed by Nomar Mazzara. There's your American League leader in RBIs, 11 of them for Nomar Mazzara. 5-0 Rangers. And now Mike Napoli. So two more home runs today for the Rangers. And, you know, we're, we're getting to the point now where, <laughs> where you start to, you know, break out the, the home run numbers. And, and they're leading the world in this, leading the world in that, multi-homers and so many consecutive games. It's just, it's nuts. 0-2 oh, to Napoli. Well, you knew this team was going to have some power coming into the season, and it's been on display early on. They're going to go through those spouts where it's not going to be there. Tell you, just look at this team, and once everything kind of sinks together at the same time, you can see why it's going to be difficult for everybody else in the American League West. 1-2 and two to Napoli. So that's nine straight games to open the season. The franchise record is 10 games. In 2009. And they'll have a shot at that tomorrow in Seattle. They came in today tied with the New York Mets for the most home runs in Major League Baseball, but already two today. And Napoli shoots this one sharply foul. And Nap will get a new bat. So a run in the first, two in the second, two more here in the third. Yesterday we saw another one of those, those outings for A.J. Griffin where we noted it if he gets four or more runs of support, and it's happened now 31 times in A.J.'s career, he personally has gone 26-0 in those 31 games. It's incredible. I mean, there's just days where you're not going to have it even when your team comes out and scores some runs. And not that four runs is a ton of runs. It's a decent amount of runs in, in games that you would expect to win most of the time. But usually there's going to be a couple of losses in there. But A.J. has been good. There's certain guys that just pitch really well, are very comfortable uh, with the lead. And he was excellent last night. 2-2 Two -two to Napoli. And he swings and misses. Strikeout as the first out of the third inning. So Griffin last night, he was he was pretty good. Worked quickly, two strikes. Well, I really liked his approach early on. As you see the strikeout there of Mike Trout on the cutter, completely catching uh, guys off guard. Alba Pujols, Cole Calhoun with the fastball early on. Then he went to that slower breaking ball after he went through the inning. Or excuse me, went through the lineup at least once. And the game plan was working. The execution was solid. Big hugs all around last night for A.J. Griffin. Did an excellent job for Jeff Bannister's club. So all that leads me to the question then, as Rugnet Odor takes ball one, is I wonder what Darvish's record is when he gets five or more runs of support as he has today. So oh, I, surely yeah. it's got to be. Are you, are you setting yourself up because you already know the answer? I do not oh, know really? the answer. Right. And I, right. I know you're adept at looking those things up. Oh, okay. So you're actually trying to get me to research something. That was your plan there. No. I, I like. Sure, I got nothing else to do. Why not? I'll take a look. You're trying like, to would you guess that it would be a, a perfect record like AJ's? No, I would not. I mean, because it's, it's hard as, to do. It is. As good as you, Darvish, has been. Listen, wins and losses for a pitcher a lot of times are out of your control. There's only so much that you can do. And so there's going to be times where you pitch well, you get some runs that you know, might struggle or you know, ultimately end up getting a loss. So take a peek and try to figure that out. Meanwhile, the count two and one on Rugnet Odor, who's singled in the second inning. I didn't know there was going to be homework today. I didn't see no. that. No. One must always be prepared to do anything. Here's a pitch from Nolasco. And Odor pops it straight up in the air, right side of the infield. And Espinosa will take care of it, two away. 
while we get on the internet, we will check in <laughs> with Dana Larson on our first Chevy game break. Okay, thanks, Dana. Two away here in the third inning, and the pitch bounced back up the middle. Elvis Andrews with another hit. And it's a two-out hit, keeping the inning alive for the Rangers. And Elvis is keeping that bat rolling. Elvis Andrews, another one of these hot hitters. And again, you see it pitch away, not trying to do too much, stay in the middle of the field. Gets himself a base hit up the middle. Now, so far, early returns here. Use baseball reference first. They only do it in bunches. They go zero to two runs, three to five. So when you Darvish gets three to five runs of run support, his record is 13 and five. Okay. In his 34 start. So that's part A. Now, Velasco low and in to Joey Gallo. Velasco's starting to pile up some pitches here in these first three innings. See Gallo struck out looking in the second on a, a borderline strike three. It was right after you had mentioned, CJ, that, that he's been patient, he's been selective, and he leads this team in walks. And he took a very close 3 2 pitch. And it, and it certainly looked just knee jerk that it was going to be his sixth walk of the year. Instead, it ended up a strikeout he has 12 of those and the game day data from MLB.com had that pitch just off the plate with so many cameras and so many different ways to get information they had that ball excuse me that ball just off which it borderline I'm not going to crush an umpire for one that's just off an inch or two but that looked like that one was just off the plate so maybe not completely fair to Paul Emil but it was it was a good pitch it was close but it did look like a ball Man on for Gallo. I'll check in with Andrews, who did steal a base in the second, his first this year. It's interesting, too, that with, with Gallo, really maybe one of the more defining moments in this early part of the year for him was a strikeout. Jeff Bannister signing the game Tuesday, the second game of the season, when Gallo struck out to end the game. And that was that 4-3 that loss to the Cleveland Indians on Tuesday night last week. Afterward, and then the next day, Jeff Bannister talking about the way that Gallo walked off the field after that strikeout. The look in his eye, the, the way he carried himself. He said he saw everything he needed to see. There's a, a maturity and a real difference in the way Gallo has handled things this year. A guy who I think for the first time really feels like, you know, he deserves to be here. Runner going. An outside strike call, and then Elvis gunned down at second base for the final out of the inning. Rangers, though, pick up two more. Nomar Mazar keeping his incredible start going with a two-run shot.
bottom of the third, we go. And Grammy Award-winning hip-hop artist Lecrae will be performing a post-game concert Sunday, April 30th, presented by Bucker International. Watch the Angels take on the Rangers, the 205 game, and then enjoy the concert afterward. Go to TexasRangers.com slash concerts for your game tickets. And for more information on how you can see Lecrae and concert from the field. I got an update for you. you Challenge me. me. Got a little nerd in me, so when you throw something at yeah. out at me, maybe a little bit more than a little, but I want to know the answer. So if I did it right, according to stats research, I didn't. Add, I could have sent an email and asked them, and they right. could do the research, but I prefer to be a little bit more hands-on. 31 times in his career, Hugh Darvish has received five or more runs of support. 31 times. All right. He is 28 no. So there you go. Well done. Probably the last time you say that. Yunel sure. Escobar starting the third inning, so top of the order for the Angels here. And it is one and one. Escobar struck out swinging in the first. So 31 times Darvish has gotten five or more runs of support, and he has gone 28 and 0. Three no decisions in there. And looks like two of them were coughed up by the bullpen. He's looking pitch pretty well. But then there was one where he went five innings and gave up seven runs back in 2012. But got a no decision in that one as well. well so based on that, you have to feel pretty good about things right now. Just like last night with A.J. Griffin. Darvish has gone once through the order. And the one-two. And he strikes out Escobar for a second time. This has been a good matchup so far for you, Darvish, as he gets Escobar in that two-strike count. And that right there is the good fastball that you're looking for from you, Darvish, and the consistency of it. That's paint. That is down and away exactly where he wants it. It's unfair to ask him to do that all the time. But he's got that pitch right there with that really good command. You're going to be really happy at 95 miles an hour. Not too many guys getting to that pitch. Now it's Calhoun. And he singled in the first inning. Pulled one sharply through the right side. And takes ball one. Final game in this three-game series. And this is just the very beginning of what will be a very long road trip. Rangers going through three, three cities here on the West Coast. I think to Seattle later this afternoon and then to Oakland after the weekend and the count one and one on Calhoun. Rangers now getting to that third time through the rotation. Darvish at the opening day start. This is his third go round. And the question will be who gets the start on Saturday? Might be what they're talking about right now. Jeff Bannister, Doug Brokale. It certainly does seem to be leaning in the direction of Andrew Kashner. We'll find out soon enough. He'll be making his season debut. And he continues to come back with good reports uh, on all of his throwing sessions. And Jeff Bannister today saying, well, look, it's going to be Kashner or Nick Martinez. He said, and more or less basically said today in his media session unless something happens and fully understanding that something could he said it would probably be Andrew Kashner this one fouled off two and two to Calhoun Kashner was the one real target in the offseason for this rotation and Daniels went out signed him to a one year deal in hopes that he could really help bolster that bullpen and Tyson Ross came along a little bit later Ross the expectation is that he will rehab himself after surgery this offseason and come back to join the team maybe at some point in May still a possibility I suppose he could even appear as early as April the 2-2 two -two is very high and it's a full count on Cole Calhoun we've talked about how strong the rotation has been so far even though there's been some bad luck on some of those starts, so you think about now adding Andrew Kashner potentially this weekend. 
rotation getting even stronger, assuming he's going to be healthy and pitching like we have seen him in the past in his career, and then also knowing that Tyson Ross is there as well. That's the kind of depth that the Rangers have at least built within, within the organization, which is extremely important. 3-2, and Calhoun down swinging. Five strikeouts for you, Darvish, this afternoon. And it's now time for Arps getting to know. And AARP helping us get to know Mike Trout. Yeah. He was the 25th overall pick back in 2009. And all he's done since then, a couple of MVPs, five All-Star selections. And a lot of regret for the 24 picks Man, before only. that. <laughs> Now the Angels actually had the 24th pick. That they had back-to-back -back picks that year. They took Randall, uh, excuse me, Randall Gritchick. Memory serves with the 24th pick. But the thing about Mike Trout going that late in the first round, first of all, high school hitters are very difficult to try to project. So that was part of it a little bit. Also, he was a Northeast guy. I talked to a couple different scouts about you know, what happened with Mike Trout in his draft. How did he fall as far as he did? And you know, it was very difficult to get a read on him. He grew up in New Jersey. Maybe not facing the stiffest competition in high school, and so it was kind of difficult to get a read. They knew he was going to be a good player, but they didn't realize probably how good coming out of that draft. But yes, it was Randall Gritchick that went to pick before him. There's always uh, a little bit of regret there. Maybe a lot in the case of Mike Trout for a lot of teams. One ball, one strike. How about that number just a moment ago there? A 436 on base percentage since the start of last year. Yep. Come does on. well. The guy knows the strike so well. He's also got the power. You see the pull power. That's why we got the shift here on the left side from the Angel Rangers. Excuse me, Rangers infield. Well, Darvish dialing in just a little bit now, and the breaking ball just out of the zone. Now Darvish, or excuse me, Darvish. Trout has far and away been the best player coming out of that draft, without a doubt. That was the same year where Steven Strasburg went one overall. It was a pretty strong draft back in 2009. Shelby Miller was in that first round, went before Mike Trout. Zach Wheeler went before Mike Trout. Dustin Ackley, the second overall pick. So the Mariners missed the opportunity. But you see Darvish wanting to actually elevate on the fastball, right? We've talked a lot about that's the weak spot for Mike Trout, and he misses down. And catches a break. Usually it's the other way around. You're trying to shoot down, you miss up, and you get yourself in trouble. Harvish digs in. And the 2 2. Trout stays alive. Harvish has struck out the last four batters he has faced. Starting with Danny Espinosa in the second inning. Got Espinosa and Carlos Perez, and now started this inning by punching out Yunel Escobar and Cole Calhoun. 5 0 Rangers. And of those five strikeouts for you, Darvish, four have come on the fastball, one on the curveball. We actually haven't seen any off the slider, which is a good swing and miss strikeout pitch for him. I set in the 2 2. Good battle brewing right now between these two. Well, these are the two guys we highlighted. We knew that these would be the focal points today. Darvish on the mound, Trout at the plate. Seventh pitch of the at-bat. And a comeback when it gets Darvish on the shoulder. So Trout wins this matchup on with the infield hit. And that will quickly get Kevin Harmon out of the dugout, head athletic trainer. And Jeff Bannister to go out there and make sure that Darvish is okay. Now we'll see where this caught him. I think Darvish almost looked a little bit stunned. You, you know, you get hit with the ball a lot of times. There's a reaction. You're looking for the ball. But it looked like he started to feel it a little bit right before he picked up the ball. It was a hard ground ball. Bounced up. Looked like it caught Darvish on his back. On the right side a little bit. And a lot of times a strong finish when you spin like that. Maybe up on his potential on the right shoulder a little bit. On the back a little bit. But... He's caught him on a big part of the body. That's what's important. 
And that situation takes a little while to figure out where the ball is, what just happened a lot of times. And no chance to get Mike Trout out at first. But you see his frustration. And the frustration there for him, one, thinking, okay, I should have caught that ball maybe or I had a chance at it. But the bigger one for him, I think, after he had just struck out four in a row, you know he wanted to strike out Mike Trout right there in that two-strike count. Well, now has to deal with Trout as a base runner. And he's a good one of those as well. Albert Pujols at the plate. And that's ball one. Pujols grounded out in the first inning. How about that? Rangers have really bottled him up nicely since the start of last year. A dangerous right-handed hitter. Trout is running. The pitch is strike. The throw to second. Not in time. Really, really strong jump by Mac Mike Trout. Robinson Trinos was not going to have any chance to get him. There was even a little bit of a hesitation in there, and he gave it away that he was going, but it didn't matter. Watch him flinch here a little bit and then kind of go. That's a really nice jump for Mike Trout. And like I said, Robinson Trinos, he could have made the best throw he's ever made in his life. He was not going to have a chance to get Mike Trout there. So now in scoring position where a base hit into the outfield should get him home. One and one the count. Make it one and two. You know, Trout last year had 30 stolen bases. A couple years ago had 49. That was in 2012 is the first real big year up in the big leagues. And I have kind of wondered with Trout, I mean, he's such a great player all-round game. How many more stolen bases do you suppose he would have in his career if Albert Pujols wasn't batting behind him? Sure, that's definitely part of it. You don't want to run into outs when you have a great hitter behind you. He's talked about it in the past, talked about it going into last season, about wanting to kind of up his stolen base numbers. He did, as you just mentioned, in 2016 after having a career-low 11 in 2015 but yeah it's interesting the fact that he did steal those 49 in his first full year led Major League Baseball at the time it's interesting to see what could be there you know potential 40 40 season could he do it he is absolutely capable it's just a matter of how that lineup is set and what makes the most sense for the team pitch to Pujols and he'll bloop this one back of short but Andrews able to track it down and end the inning so Trout got on via the infield hit, but left out in scoring position again. And it's 5-0 Rangers. Game summary and going back to that second inning, Elvis Andrews there 
the stolen base. Torinos with a base hit down the right field line. Nice job as the Rangers coming out and swinging the back jersey from Crowbar as well. Good to see the bottom of the order contributing, driving some runs in. How about the Rangers? All seven hits so far off of fastball. You just have to wonder if Ricky Velasco is going to make some kind of adjustments. Five strikeouts for you, Darvish, so far through three innings. The only concern that pitch count is starting to creep up a little bit at 59 through three innings. So the strikeouts are nice, but some economy might be something to shoot for here going forward. A little tall to Joey Gallo. It's 2 and 0. Oh. So Gallo. Chirinos and Profar in this fourth inning. Five nothing Rangers. And Alaska working a little, a little faster. It looks like this inning comes right back at him. It was three and zero. Oh. And the important thing there, when I say okay, Ricky Alaska was allowed all seven of his hits on fastballs. You don't stop throwing your fastball. You got to be a little bit more careful hitting your spots, and, and you may be trying to pitch a little bit backwards and start showing a little bit more off speed early in the count to get guys off of your fastball. Let me ask you, am, I, am I crazy? Am I imagining something? Mm -hmm. Or is he making a very, uh, I don't know, discernible change in his tempo here? Could be. I mean, listen, coaches are watching everything you're doing. You mentioned it. You noticed it early. It seemed like he was being a little bit deliberate when you're struggling. You're down 5 nothing after 3. No doubt, pitching coach Charles Nagy come up to you and say, listen, pace is a little bit slow. Pick it up. I think it's been part of it. And he may not even realize it. Sometimes a day game catch you off guard. You don't realize that you're working a little bit slower than usual. So it's possible that he's working a little bit quicker, but also possible that somebody else noticed it and mentioned it to him. 3 2. Gallo fouls it back. Yeah, he's he, he's staying really close to the rubber. You know, even on the, the toss is back from Perez. It's like he's he's trying not to stray too far, he wants to get right back up on there and and go. At least it, it seems to me. And three two again. This one is pulled into right field. Base hit for Gallo. Wait, it, it always amazes me into those shifts when there's no room between guys. <laughs> the, the dudes are still able to sneak it through. Well, we saw it earlier from Rubinet Odor. Now we see it here on a three two count. Ricky Nolasco trying to go in again to a left handed hitter. Misses out over the plate and there just was not a lot of room there and he hit it in the perfect spot. Get himself a lead off base hit. That's been the theme. That's what we've seen here from Nolasco against these left handed hitters in the Rangers lineup and there's five of them out there today including the switch hitter in Profar where he's trying to get that fastball in and he's just been unable to do it consistently. The lead off man for the Rangers has a base hit now to start all four innings. Carlos Gomez homered in the first. Odor a single to left in the second. Chu a single to left in the third. And now Gallo with that base hit moments ago into right field to start this fourth inning. And they have scored in every inning. This ball popped up near third base. Escobar battling the sun makes the catch one away. And the Rangers take on the Kansas City Royals Saturday, April 22nd in a 7.05 game. Fire up the grill because the first 15,000 fans, 14 and older, will be treated to a Rangers barbecue die-cut spatula courtesy of Lynx. You can get your tickets at TexasRangers.com or by calling 972-RANGERS. I'm not working that game, so I'm hoping you'll hook me up with the yeah, spatula. I got you. You got you. me? Make sure you remind me. I'll, I'll Try and pick one up. I'll get there early, get in line twice. Appreciate it. Thank you. Don't forget the crew. It's not just, I'm not the only one here working, right? We got, everybody would love to get their hands on a spatula. Let me take some names here. Dave Burchett. We got CJ Nikowski. We'll get them. Do you want it for the spatula portion or the bottle opening portion on the other end? I actually, yeah. I, I actually maybe want it more as a decorative item. Got a pretty oh, good spatula okay. at home right now that I've been working at least until I, I run through that one. But it's a it's a beautiful looking spatula. A decorative item. I think so. Yeah. The, the Ranger logo. Okay. Yeah. Love it. You're thinking outside the box here. You're going a different direction <laughs> on me. I did not see that one coming. You can hang it on the wall above the grill outside. Oh. Something like that. Yeah. I think. I'm sure, my wife would love that. <laughs> Find a spot in her bedroom. <laughs> 
Okay. All right. So one out, Gallo at first. And Profar waiting on an 0-2 as for time. You know, speaking of things like that, you, you no doubt have a lot of, I don't know, items from your, your career, right? Your, whether they be old uniforms, maybe, you know, some, some game balls of, for whatever reason, first save, <laughs> first win. Try to do at both of those. That's okay. the point. One and two, the count to Profar. Good friend Dwayne Kuyper, he works mm -hmm. for the San Francisco Giants, had one big league home run. Yep. And so he's got the bat, he's got the ball, got the whole thing, right? He had it mounted. It's in his bathroom, right up above the <laughs> toilet. That's where, that's where he has that thing mounted. Oh, uh, that's fantastic. And that is Dwayne Kuyper. <laughs> so at least the guys get to take a look at it. Well, Gallo has a stolen base this year, so the Rangers have been willing to send him. And Alasco has taken some interest in his presence over there. One and two on Profar. With a long pause, trying to freeze Gallo, perhaps. The pitch to Profar just a little bit outside. Two and two. Starting to wonder if Alasco heard you about his quick pace and said, I'll show him. Slow down here a little bit because he has suddenly become a little bit more deliberate. Now you got to run on a base. You have to be a little bit more careful. Profar had a really good swing in his first at bat back in the sixth inning, and Ricky Nolasco was already trailing five to nothing. Concerned about making things worse. Gallo going, a swing and a miss by Profar, and Gallo holds the bag. He's got a stolen base. His second of the year. Well, Anderson Simmons wants Mike Sosha to take a little bit of a look at this because he believes he got the tag in time. And Joey Gallo may have came off the back for a second, but Simmons did not hold the tag. So we'll see here as you see Joey Gallo look in. And the tag there. No, he did hold the bag the entire time. Forgive me there. But Anderson Simmons thinks that he may have gotten the tag. It's really hard to tell from that view. So maybe a better look here. I, don't, no. I think he got the leg, but at that point, Gallo's hand was already in, and the Angels have already said, nope, not interested. Yeah, here's a really nice view right here. Nope, no tag, no tag, hand, hand is in. in. And there's your tag. Yep, and he did hold it. Yeah, yeah, that left, he did a good job of getting that left foot as he slid over with his hand. I thought maybe he came off for a second, because we talk about it a lot, right? Hold the tag now there all the time, just because of what we have seen with calls that have been turned over because guys pop off the bag, but Joey Gallo did not do that. So Gallo out there at second base. And with two away, Gomez fouls off strike one. Gomez hit that home run in the first inning, his 11th career leadoff home run. Of course, the guy waiting on deck, Shinsu Chu, he's done that 20 times in his career. One strike pitch. He chases that one of the dirt. It's 0 2. All right, you want to, you want to take a stab at a couple of the top five in the big leagues and lead off home runs. Mitch Gomez 11, Chu has 20. These are active players. Active players. Think about that. Ian Kinsler there? He is in there. He is second with 40. Nicely done. 0 oh, 2 pitch. And that one bounces and gets away from Perez. Heading to third base, Gallo on the wild pitch. Active players. Ball here in the dirt. Good read by Joey Gallo. Breaking ball. Perez didn't get all the way down. Gave that ball a chance to scoot through his legs right through the five hole. Ellsbury's not on that list, right? One big year. He's not. Our AT&T high-speed replay. Here's a leadoff home run. That's what they look like. It's Carlos Gomez in the first inning. And before the majority of these fans had even taken their seats, the Rangers had that one nothing lead. So three of the five have been mentioned, correct? You said Gomez, you said Chu. 
Yeah, neither of them among the top. Oh, they're top not five. in the top five. I take that back. Oh, okay. Ian Kinsler. Alex Gordon. He's leading off for a while. No. Really? The leader, Curtis Granderson. Wow. 42 of them. Ichiro has 37. How about that? That's right. That's that one. Who said he wants to play until he's 50 a couple of weeks ago, by the way. Why not? Why not? I can think of a lot of reasons why not, actually. <laughs> There's the pitch on the way to Gomez outside, and it's a full count. Well, you you don't think he can play to 50? I do. He could. Not as an everyday player, obviously. We saw Julio Franco do it to, what, age 47, if I'm not mistaken? And then he continued to play. I think it was independent ball and just refused to give it up. Count stays three and two. As long as we're doing all-time lists, how about the active hits leaders? There's Ichiro, 3,031. Adrian Beltre hoping to get to that magic plateau here this year. 35th all-time, 2,942. Of course, Bulls, he's on every list of active leaders. Gomez chases one of the dirt, strikes out to end the fourth inning. Perez will have to throw him out at first base, but that will do it. Rangers leave a man at third, and for the first time today, they don't score in an inning. Thinning this afternoon, and Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with Girls on the Run and their dedication to empowering young girls and instilling confidence through running. Learn more about how you can get involved as a volunteer or a participant at the upcoming Girls on the Run 5K in your area by visiting foxsportsupports.com. Right, Darvish working with that five run lead. How about this? In the first inning, he stranded runners at second and third. Second inning, he stranded Cameron Maben at third. And then in the third, he left Mike Trout at second base. So the Angels have had all kinds of runners in scoring position. But Darvish won't let him come home. Hamilton yeah. Simmons will start the fourth inning for the Angels, and he takes a strike. Been kind of a theme, too, that we've seen from a handful of the Rangers starters. We saw it with Cole Hamels battling. The first game here, right, with some guys getting on base, but making the pitches that he had to make. Martin Perez, the last start at home, same thing. And so Rangers starters have been grinding with runners on base, doing a nice job preventing those guys from scoring. A flare out to the right side, and it's hauled in by Odor. One away. How about our Jimmy John's delivery of the game? And this is going to be all about the Darvish strikeouts on the fastball. And it has been good. Fastball command, extremely important. For you, Darvish, we talk about it a lot, elevating against Escobar, painting down and away. Love seeing that from you, Darvish, but fastball command so far today through three and a third. Nice pitch to Cole Calhoun as well. One of the biggest keys for you, Darvish, is that he's been good throughout his career. We know that. We know that he knows how to strike. 
hitters out, but it is about that fastball command, fastball strikes, finishing off hitters. Four of the five strikeouts via the fastball today. Now first pitch swing, and Maben pops this one foul, and it gets up into the stands. Maven walked to lead off the second inning. One of two walks that Darvish has allowed. What that last year, Maven really a breakthrough year offensively for the Detroit Tigers. And I think the Angels had to feel pretty good getting him to come here to play left field. And hopefully, for the Angels' sake, maybe solidify a position that has been such a disaster for them the last couple of seasons. One strike pitch from Darvish. That was a good acquisition for the Angels. They have always been a team that has stayed under the luxury tax threshold. They've gotten pretty close, but ownership here in Artie Moreno has refused to go over. They just don't like the policy. They don't like the idea of having to pay into that luxury tax. And so adding to a team that already has Albert Pujols, already has Mike Trout. It's a big contract still paying. I mentioned this the other day. Josh Hamilton for one more year up over $20 million. There wasn't a lot of essentially what they would refer to as cap room for them. Even though there's no hard cap in baseball, they look at it that way. They don't want to go over. So to be able to bring in Cameron Mabin his last year, the deal that he signed, that six-year contract was a nice add for them. Well, he strikes out swing in the fourth inning, and that is number six for Darby. We mentioned the fastballs that he's been getting the strikeouts on, but how about the breaking ball here? Well located, a strike the entire way, just finishes off the plate. Nice sharp break from Hugh Darvish on the slider. So now with two away, and that brings up Jeffrey Marte, who flied out of the second inning. He's 0 for 1. Another former Tiger. And Darvish dumps in a strike. Marte, a guy who was acquired by the Angels two years ago, before the 2016 season. In a trade for Cody Eaves, an infielder. And last year, Marte, 15 home runs, a 252 batting average. They were able to use him in several different spots on the diamond and becomes kind of a, an important guy for them. He's, Next pitch in there for a strike at the count 0 2. Well, neither starter today, Ricky Nolasco for the Angels or Hugh Darvish for the Rangers, has posted a 1 2 3 inning yet today. Darvish trying to do that right here in his 0 2 pitch. There's a swing and a miss, strike three. Seventh strike out of the afternoon for Hugh Darvish. And he did it with a nine pitch inning, exactly what the doctor ordered as that pitch count had climbed up. You Darvish finishing strong here. Two punch outs to finish off the Angels.
in this three-game series, and then in doing so, win the series. And hey, Rangers fans, download the Fox Sports Go app and take Rangers baseball with you wherever you go. If you can't watch the games on TV, you can stream them live on your mobile device with the Fox Sports Go app, presented by Hyundai. Chu leading off the fifth inning, and he takes one high for a ball. It'll be Chu, Nomar Mazzara, Mike Napoli, the two, three, and four hitters for the Rangers in this fifth. And an offense that continues to churn one and one the count. Velasco has allowed at least a run in three of the four innings so far this afternoon and is very high to chew. It's two and one. That's been a that's been a bit of an issue when you look back at what the Angels have done in this early part of the season. Their starting pitching has not really done the job. Three and one the count. Well, they have struggled and for Ricky Nolasco after you get down five to nothing early even though the pitch count has gotten a little bit high. Mike Sosa needs him to stay out there try to get deep into the game. Keep it where it is. You don't have to get into that bullpen too early at home. Two lifts this one high in the air. Mabin with the shades on and there's one out. Part of this offense's strength has been the power early on. And a no downer here from Nomar Mazzara. Fastball up over the plate. He knew it off the bat. Cole Calhoun gave him the courtesy look. Yeah. He knew it was gone. So the Rangers and Tigers, the only ones to homer in every game so far this year. Mentioned that. The two home runs today. The Rangers tomorrow will have a chance to tie a franchise record if they can homer against the Seattle Mariners. Nomar Mazzara now with three long balls. And how many guys on the team now with three home runs? It's crazy. Andrews has three. Mazzara with three. Gomez with three. No, oh, and Ruben Odor. That's right. And maybe equally as surprising, we saw the Tigers that are the only other team than the Rangers to hit a home run in every game, and that is including zero home runs from Miguel Cabrera, zero home runs from Victor Martinez. It's other guys that are getting it done in that lineup. Yeah, and on the Rangers side, I guess you could say, you know, zero home runs from Adrian Beltre. That's right. Outside, and it is three and one now on Mazzara. Although. Victor and Miggy have 54 at bats. Yeah. <laughs> They're 0 for 54 with the long ball. Adrian has a legitimate excuse. Here's a 3 1. And a strike. Full count now on Mazzara. Omar has been slotted into the third spot in the order and has thrived there. Think about that. 21 years old. And, and he's been batting third. And you would never, you know, you would just never know it. I mean, he's just so cool about it. The big chill. It's half the battle in this game. It's controlling your emotions, staying in with, within yourself. No more does it. As good as any young player we've seen. Well, he takes strike three. Two away in the fifth inning. And time for us to take a look at our progressive upcoming schedule. Wrapping things up here this afternoon. Tomorrow night, at it again in Seattle. First of three against the Mariners. Three different start times in that series. And then right out of Seattle into Oakland, a three-city, nine-game roadie for the first time out this season. Now Mike Napoli 0 for 2 today. Flat out of the first inning, struck out in the third. And we've got a fun pitching matchup tomorrow too in Seattle. That's going to be really interesting. Martin Perez against Felix Hernandez. Teammates with Team Venezuela during the World Baseball Classic in the 1-0 pitch. And there for a strike. See another off-speed pitch from Ricky Nolasco. 
to Mike Napoli. It's been a pretty steady diet of the 13 pitches that he has, has seen. Only four fastballs so far to Mike Napoli. One and two the count. And there's another one. He just refuses. As much as we've talked about the fastball and being an issue to other hitters, he understands that Mike Napoli is a strong fastball hitter. We've mentioned Alaska, and you've seen it, not an overpowering fastball. He stayed away from it for the most part against Knapp. That one for show, and it's two and two. Yep, he wanted to get on base, see if he can get Odor a shot in this fifth inning, and fouls that one off. Catcher's interference, and he knew it right away. Mike Napoli took his swing turned around and pointed to the home plate umpire to say I hit his glove. That's exactly what happened is Carlos Perez must have been out there just a little bit too far. We'll take a look here. He went reaching for this and he did watch Mike Napoli's reaction right away. Barely nicked that glove. So Napoli is on and indeed does get Odor to the plate. Technically, that will go down as an error on the catcher, Perez. This is uh, one of the worst things I'll ever admit to in my life, but when I struggled as a kid. <laughs> oh, David. <laughs> I sometimes would lengthen the swing a little bit. <laughs> oh, doorless one in the center field. Here comes Trout. You kidding me? Makes it look routine. Inning over, Napoli left, and we're halfway to the house this afternoon. Oh, it's not a day for the beach, though. This is a day to be playing some baseball. Rangers leading at 5-0. Baseball break brought to you by T-Mobile. And uh, how about these little tidbits, Derek Holland? Only one hit allowed through six innings last night at Cleveland. Of course, Rangers fans will remember he, he loved pitching back home in Ohio. He was 4-0 and in five career starts at Progressive Field with a 1-0-2 ERA. So he's always done well there. The Orioles, five home runs last night against the Red Sox after having just five home runs in their first six games of the year. And the Reds, they're going to win the Central Division in the <laughs> National League. Best start since 1990, which, of course, was the year that they. Well, they did go wire to wire that year, right? And then they the swept, the, uh, swept the A's in the World Series. Mm -hmm. Chris Sabo and those goggles. Nasty boys out of the bullpen. Did cheat you, Darvish, a pitch. He actually had an eight pitch inning, which is pretty incredible. Our last inning of the fourth was his first one, two, three inning. 
I still yeah. did that with two strikeouts as well. Right? Yeah. That's the thing you start thinking about, okay, can you be economical? Are you trying to get ground balls within the first couple of pitches? Well, he had two three-pitch strikeouts. i got to believe Jeff Bannister was pretty happy to see that, get that pitch count kind of back in line where you want it for the fifth inning. One and one the count. Danny Espinoza, one of the seven strikeout victims so far this afternoon for Darvish. This one lifted into left. Long run out there for Profar, and he can't get to it. And Espinoza will take a bloop single. Well, the Angels have the lead man on. Saw you, Darvish, go to the cutter on the first pitch, and then again here on the third pitch. And you said it. Long run for Profar. Tried to barehand that on one hop, picked it up with his glove. Fortunate. But Espinosa didn't come out too aggressively and try to advance on that. So Espinosa aboard. Carlos Perez 0 for 1 and struck out looking in the second. 5 0 Rangers. Today's game following suit with what we have used to this season, which is a lot of the offense is early. Five runs in the first three innings. Well, Darvish has put four zeros on the board so far this afternoon. And that'll make the count one and one. And you know, we, we saw it opening night. Darvish didn't have his best game. Good enough, certainly put him himself, his team in a in a good position, but wasn't getting the swings and misses. And today, well, we saw it a little bit better a second time out. Today, getting a little bit better still. Yeah, really strong so far. It was 11 in his last start, 14 so far today after that Carlos Perez check swing that he could not hold up on. And that's what you expect to see from you, Darvish, right? That is what he does so well. That's why the strikeout rate is so high. A lot of swings and misses in his game. And he's gotten incrementally better with each start. Well, he's just eclipsed 70 pitches for the afternoon. Count one and two on Carlos Perez. <laughs> inning by inning look at the workload today for Darvish. A good candidate here now obviously a one two count certainly an opportunity for a strikeout but also a really great candidate for a double play with Perez. The middle infield pulled in a little bit at double play depth the toss over there to keep Espinosa close to the back. Those 14 misses today of the 32 total. 44% a very good number for Darvish. 1 2. And there's another swing and a miss. Eighth strikeout for you, Darvish. Time for a Chevy game break. Let's check it again with Dana Larson. Okay, thanks, Dana. One away here, bottom of the fifth inning. Espinosa over at first base. Daniel Escobar for the third time this afternoon, and he takes strike one. He has struck out his first two times in. Chance we can get back to your admitted catcher's interference, intentional over the course of your <laughs> youth career. <laughs> that is dirty. Yeah, You're swinging well, to bring a fungal up there like a 38-inch bat. <laughs> Yeah. Whack the catcher's glove, and you feel bad if you hurt the guy. No, let, let me. This one in the dirt, and the count one to one. I I just bring it up to give you a, a sense for how desperate 
things were. Know, uh, an an eight-year-old, a ten-year-old kid, whatever it was, can get. I mean, I, I lost track of where first base was. I just had to go reaffirm that there was a first base there. And so I figured whatever it took at some point. All the way back in the box, maybe even out of the box a little bit, I'm no. assuming. And you're not even looking at the pitch. You just, as soon as he throws it, you look at the catcher's glove and just swing and hit it. So I would get drilled in today's game all the time <laughs> for my behavior. Runner going, and it keeps him out of a double play. Andrews right there. Throws the first to take care of Escobar, and mercifully, in that portion of our conversation, Espinosa is at second with two away. How about the big story, CJ? Did you hear the Chicago Cubs won the World Series last right? year? Yeah. That's the first time in, like, 15 years or something? Yeah. Last time? I think I can't remember. 108 years. It's a party that'll never end. Now, I mean, I think we had to anticipate this sure. a little bit. Understandably so. Cubs fans absolutely deserve it. No longer lovable losers. The ring is absolutely beautiful. They all are, though. But they didn't overdo it, right? There have been some rings that you can't wear. I'll tell you something. An 03 Marlins ring you cannot wear. It's a beautiful accomplishment for that organization. They're second at the time. You cannot wear it. Get yourself a nice gold rope. Yes. Put it on there, and you're good to go. That's probably the better way. But it's interesting. If you ever go to the Hall of Fame, they have at least one ring from every World Series year, and it really is fascinating to see the evolution of World Series rings and where they were from the very beginning of time and, and how much they have changed. But I, th I think the Cubs ring is, is gorgeous. They did a really nice job. They put 108 diamonds in it to represent the 108 years. It sounds a little gaudy, but it doesn't look... They didn't overdo it. I, I, they did a really nice job with it. Two away here. Yeah, 108 diamonds. That does sound a little gaudy. <laughs> <laughs> the Indians ring, actually, their American League Championship ring is also very nice. One and one to Calhoun. Well, I, I maintain there's no such thing as a bad championship ring. Now, going way back, right, way back to the early days, it wasn't always a ring. It might yep. be a belt buckle and watches with all sorts of different pieces of jewelry. I, I'm, I'm wondering when that when that turned exactly. I'm and not sure when it turned, but I, I'm very interested to see if there's a possibility of bringing the belt buckle back. If anybody could do it, it could be the Rangers, right? Yeah, no, I, 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 I want agree. the ring. Listen, that championship is coming. It's coming soon. I believe that. But the belt buckle, it's got a little more swag. Listen, like you said, a lot of rings out there now. Second place rings are beautiful. Give out a championship ring for just about anything these days. But who's got the buckle? Two and one to count to Calhoun. And that will square it. Calhoun. One for two today. He struck out his last time up. Would you wear a, you know, a big oversized belt buckle? Would, would that be something you would feature as part of the wardrobe? I'd feel better about it if it was a championship buckle over sure. maybe a ring that was a little bit too much. Because it's a fun item. But there would be a little bit extra pressure to stay in shape. That's the only downside. <laughs> if you're going to try to draw attention to your belt buckle, might mean less ice cream for yes. you. No brownie today, buddy. Proud of you. The 2-2 pitch. And there is strike three. Calhoun down on strikes. And Darvish with another scoreless inning. Nine strikeouts today for the Rangers ace. And he's working with a 5-0 lead.
Sonic Drive-In. Today's jackpot worth $900 plus dinner for two at Sonic Drive-In. Today, the Rangers are hitting for Calvin Harmon of Euless, Texas. So if a Ranger hits a homer this inning, well, Calvin wins 900 bucks. If the Rangers hit a grand slam this inning, he wins $25,000. Good luck, Calvin. For all the home runs, and we've talked a lot about them, there have been plenty. Still haven't had one in the sixth inning. Meanwhile, Daniel Wright will make an appearance for the Angels today. So Ricky Nolasco done after five innings. And part of that was the higher pitch count creeped up there, but also the great at bats that we saw from the Texas Rangers. Hitting the fastball well today against Ricky Nolasco. His day is done. Daniel Wright was recalled yesterday from AAA Salt Lake when the Angels placed Andrew Bailey on the 10 day disabled list. Bailey working through some inflammation in his right shoulder, so Wright getting an opportunity to pitch at the big league level and pumps in a strike to Elvis Andrews. He made his big league debut a year ago was with the Cincinnati Reds and then came over to the Angels. Pitching nine games, seven of those were starts. A waiver claim by the Angels last September. His 1-1 one, one, and Andrews turns it foul. Well, and they're in a spot, the, the Angels, much like the Rangers, where they are trying to figure out who is going to make a start for them coming up this weekend. And bouncing around a couple of different ideas. I think largely, when you think about guys who have been going long out of their bullpen, Bud Norris comes to mind. Is this one chopped down the third baseline? That's a fair ball. And Andrews on again, takes a big turn, and he will jog into second with a leadoff double. Another multi-hit game for Elvis Andrews. And another extra base hit as he continues to get it done. Now this one was not hit nearly as hard as fourth double of the season, but he got it right down the line. Escobar's kind of looking in. I don't know if he felt like this ball wasn't fair, but a hanging breaking ball that sat up and in. You see this ball, and Escobar had no chance, and absolutely that ball was fair. So the Rangers continuing to put runners on base to open innings, and here's Joey Gallo, who's one for two. White's first pitch down low for a ball. We're talking about Mike Napoli and how he didn't see, hasn't seen very many fastballs today, didn't see them from the Lasco, just six of the 16 pitches. It has been the opposite for Joey Gallo, who was a very good fastball hitter. The 17 pitches that he saw. Which is a really nice number. Of course, he had that half of that bat when Elvis got thrown out stealing. But during that time, he saw 12 fastballs <laughs> of the 17. That's risky business against Joey Gallo. Gallo a chance to pick up another RBI. He came into the game with with nine of them. Count one and one. Considering that Gallo hasn't had that many hits, he has made them uh, pretty big ones. Wright gets a visit from Perez. We had the big day. Was it Sunday? We had the five RBIs. Mm -hmm. Start talking to you know like a, a hits to RBI ratio and. Gallo's got a really good thing going. He has now six hits, including today's. It's two and one, six hits, with nine RBIs coming from them. So that, that that's pretty good. Rangers got a run of the first. Carlos Gomez had the leadoff homer. They added two in the second, two more in the third. On a Mazzara two-run blast. And it's now three and one to Gallo. Third time today, all right. Three ball count for him in all three at bats. Yep. Swings right through this one, though, and it's a full count.
Gallo, big, strong guy. We've talked about so much about the confidence this year. You, you pointed out now he leads the team in stolen bases with two. He leads the team with walks. And it might well be that he's miscast as a power guy. Maybe he's a leadoff man. <laughs> and he takes ball four. There's another walk, the sixth of the year for him. And now the first two men on in this sixth inning for the Rangers. And we check in once again with Emily Jones. Well, guys, we keep talking about the dramatic j change in Joey Gallo and trying to figure out where it came from. I spoke with him again today before the game, and, you know, we've heard how comfortable he is and all those different things. And, and I asked him, mechanically, has he done anything? He said he did open his stance up just a bit. He said he can see more and he can use his hands to get to more balls. He said also, uh, mentally, he deleted a lot of his social media accounts and he doesn't want to be on those during the season. He doesn't need the distraction. He doesn't need to hear the outside chatter. Everything he needs to hear is going to come from inside that clubhouse. It's a smart play. I think for a lot of these guys, there's that opportunity where the wrong things can get in your head. Unfortunately, not everybody on social media is nice. He, he won't say I tagged him today in a tweet actually talking about his first at bat just to show fans put a little uh, chart out there that show where that pitch was the, the three two pitch but this is not going to see it. I tweet me back it's fine but um, it's a smart play. I like that for Joey Gallo. I like it for a lot of players. Um, once you maybe get set in your ways and you feel comfortable and, and you understand the nonsense that's going to come your way but maybe while you're trying to establish yourself and just kind of get away from some of the silliness that happens on social media. So it's, it's a pretty smart play by Joey Gallo. Boy, in a game so so weighed down by failure and negativity. I can't imagine that ball players could use any more of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that would not serve I wouldn't think too many positive purposes. But I you know probably more importantly than that as Emily was just pointing out in the conversation that she had with Joey opening the stance so that he can see the ball better, right? And we're seeing it. Pitch recognition has been better. Strike zone recognition has been better. And it's sometimes just that, that little mechanical change, which when you come up through the minor league system the way Joey Gallo has, and he's such a top prospect with the big power, sometimes it's a hard sell because he's done a lot of good things with his previous stance, but needing to make the adjustment, he bought into it, and it's worked out. This one gets away from Perez. Both runners able to move up a base. And so now no double play in order. They've got second and third, nobody out. And they finally do call it a wild pitch. So Andrews at third, Gallo at second. Tough start to this thing for Daniel Wright coming out of the bullpen. Midfield is in. That one gets away from Perez. Keeps it close enough, though. Nobody going anywhere. Torino's had the run scoring double in the second inning. Popped up in the fourth. Since Mike Sosha didn't feel like there's room for a whole lot more to give up here as everybody comes up tight. Ground ball up the middle. That one through base hit. Andrews is in. Gallo being waved. He'll score without a throw. Torino's drives in two more. And the Rangers have kicked the extra point. It's seven nothing. Robinson Trinos has had some really strong quality at bats today with runners in scoring position. And as soon as that infield was drawn in, did exactly what he had to do to be able to get this ball past Andrewton Simmons, not trying to do too much. He did it also back in the second inning with that double that he had, the RBI driving in Elvis Andrews. And so when you're the backup catcher. Sometimes the offense is going to suffer because of the lack of consistency with that bats. But Robinson Chirinos has really showed up today and done a very nice job. Well, that's a nice lift. And now Profar is one for two, takes ball one. Two and oh. That was such the story last year, I thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm myriad catchers who the Rangers used especially the first three four months of the regular season who all chipped in every time someone new came in and took the job they would turn in some huge RBIs and so here's Chirinos just like last season the guy sliding in there Luke Roy's going to have the job every day by and large occasionally Chirinos is going to get that opportunity and when he's in there productive
three and one to Profar, who singled in a run in the second and struck out in the fourth. Profar getting another start in left field today. He got the start there last night as well and drove in a run. Right comes high. That's ball four. And so once again, the Rangers have two men on base. Fans, April 25th is your chance to take advantage of Fox Sports Southwest $10 Tuesday. Tickets for the Twins Rangers game are just $10. Fans can add on a $10 meal deal when purchasing online. Make sure you visit TexasRangers.com slash specials to secure your $10 Tuesday tickets for April 25th using the coupon code FSSW10. All the S's. Nobody warming up in that Angel bullpen right now. And unfortunately, this is going to be one of those situations for right where you're in the long man role. Rangers are swinging the bat, already swinging the bats well, already two runs in. He's not going to be getting any help. So he's going to be out there to try to hold this thing where it is now. Great opportunity for the Rangers, who have already blown it open, but a great opportunity to continue to add on. With seven runs, ten hits today. And it's helped, too, that the Angels have made a couple of errors. So this is a decidedly lopsided game so far. And Gomez takes one very high for a ball. Gomez up for the fourth time today. He's one for three. I think they've been kind of feast or famine with Carlos. As he hits this one high in the air out to right field. And Calhoun with plenty of time. There is the first out of the inning. Every weekday morning, Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp, they go head to head on the day's hottest sports topics. It's undisputed with Skip and Shannon weekdays from 8.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. Central, only on FS1. Chu with the hit in the third inning, came around to score. Average has bumped up about 10 points today as a result. And he takes strike one. So Daniel Wright on a relief of Ricky Nolasco, who allowed five runs on eight hits in his five innings of work. But the Rangers are adding to it against Wright. Two held off. And the count one and one. True sends this one into center. That's a base hit. Good start at second base for Chirinos. He'll score. The throw goes to third, not in time. Profar all the way down to third base on the single by Chu, and it's 8 nothing Rangers. Good base running here all the way around from the Texas Rangers. Mike Trout came up with an opportunity, he thought maybe, to get Jerks and Profar at third base, but this is the one part of his game. First of all, great job by Chu. Ball away, takes it back up the middle. The one part of Mike Trout's game, if you want to look for a dig, arm is probably average. Good throw here that was online. Would have had a good shot, I think, at Jerks and Profar. Like I said, there's not a lot of holes in this game, but it's one word. Maybe not as great. Now, Nomar Mazzara, and he pops this one up. First base side of the diamond. Marte takes care of it, so two gone. Now it doesn't get any easier for Daniel Wright now. Eighth batter of the inning, Mike Napoli comes to the plate. Three hits in the inning off Wright. A couple of walks worked in there, a wild pitch. Rangers have added three more in this sixth inning. It'll be interesting to see if Wright sticks with the same game plan that Ricky Nolasco had. He does have a slider, a curveball, and a changeup. He's got kind of that starter's repertoire. We mentioned it earlier. It's a first pitch fastball, but he hasn't seen very many of those today.
Right-handers one strike pitch and that one. Uh, <laughs> called a strike. Owen to the count. Paul Hamill trying to move this thing along a little bit there. Napoli stays right in. And this one hit sharply back up the middle though. And Espinosa on top of it. It ends the inning. Rangers add three more runs on three more hits. They leave a pair. Go to the bottom of the sixth inning. An eight run game. Southwest, yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. And by Texas Ford. Visit your local Texas Ford dealer. Ford is the best in Texas. A great view from the outfield as we take a look at you, Darvish. Eight nothing lead for the big right hander. And he'll have the heart of the order in this sixth inning for the Angels. Mike Trout, Albert Pujols, Andleton Simmons. Ball game, the, the Rangers have dominated from the start. Carlos Gomez with a leadoff home run, and they haven't looked back since. First pitch from Darvish. And that is ball one. He walked Trout in the first. And it looked like he might get him on strikes in the third inning, but Trout on a full count pitch bounced one back up the middle off of Darvish for an infield hit. And rips this one in the left. The count is on. To start at the bottom of the sixth inning. And that does kind of uh, bring up a piece of good news from today's game. That that ball that Trout hit in the third came right back up the middle, hit Darvish on the back or on the shoulder. It was kind of hard to tell exactly where. But Darvish has. You know, not shown any sign of that being an issue for him. Yeah, absolutely. Always a little bit scary as we see Mike Trout here in this at bat go down. Get a pitch as he does so well. He did drop the record for Darvish when he gets five or more runs. We mentioned it 28 no. Personally, three no decisions in there. Eight runs. <laughs> I know you're dying to know. It's getting to be that kind of game. So eight runs or more. 12 and 0. No, no decisions in there. Well, pitching here in the bottom of the sixth inning. He's allowed four hits after that single to Trout. And it is one and one on Albert Pujols. He got Albert to ground out to third and pop up to short. Average continuing to fall for Pujols. Down to 184. And there's a strike. You, what were you saying the other day for Pujols? How, how much is left on that contract? 
So he actually goes a year longer than you, Darvish. I gotta look again. I think he believes, I believe that goes through 2022. If I'm not mistaken on Albert Pujols. That 10 year deal that he signed. Excuse me, 2021. 10 2021, years, okay. 240 million dollars. One two pitch, and this one fouled off. Of course, Darvish, a free agent after this year. We'll take a look at the velocity today for Darvish. A really good average average velocity. What makes you Darvish so good? Listen, a lot of good things. The pitches, the movement, the life, but also the speed differential. You see that curveball it was averaging 76 miles an hour. The fastball at 94. Hitters would tell you the reason that a changeup is one of the most devastating pitches for hitters is because of the speed differential and your ability to recognize it. You Darvish has a deep repertoire and one that is kind of all over the map with velocity. And interesting also to see the game plan for you Darvish today against Alpha Pujols. We talked about Mike Napoli not seeing very many fastballs today. With the 14 pitches that Pujols has seen, only three of those have been fastball. A lot of heavy cutters today from you Darvish. Mike Housechild getting loose out of the bullpen for the Rangers now. Darvish getting close to 90 pitches for the day. And Darvish's first two starts, he went 98 pitches in his opener against the Indians through 97 more against Oakland. And the pitch to Pujols in the dirt. Good block back there by Chirinos. And that ridiculously so slow curveball at 71 miles an hour, the second one that he has thrown in this at bat. But A.J. Griffin's not impressed because he's got a 66 mile an hour breaking ball. We saw him yesterday use a couple of times. It really is amazing. The slow curveball, you don't see it a lot. And the Rangers have two starting pitchers in their staff that use it. See those two walks for Darvish today. Those came in the first six at bats of the game. So since then has really dialed it in. And his 2 2 pitch. That one right in there. Strike three called. And Pujols knew it. One gone in the sixth inning. I got to believe that for Albert Pujols, he was probably thinking after the slow curve, maybe it was going to be a fastball up and in. That's a really good combination for you, Darvish. But instead, he goes back to the cutter and completely caught Albert Pujols off guard. That's 10 strikeouts now for you, Darvish. Through five and a third innings, and here is Andleton Simmons. Simmons 0 for 2. He's lined out to second. He's grounded out to short. And he fouls off strike one. And we pointed out earlier what was 11.8 strikeouts per nine for Darvish against the Angels in his career, and improving on those numbers. Again today. Time called now. Torinos wants to make sure that they get the right signs this time. Simmons has been off to the great start for the Angels. I mentioned earlier all the superlatives for this Angels offense, and Simmons right in the middle of all that. Go quiet today and takes one in. Interesting to see Darvish kind of give Mike Trout a long look. First base. I mean, we know he has some issues holding runners, but down by eight. Trout's not going unless he knows he can easily swipe the bag. But for you, Darvish, at this point, I mean, yeah, you want to keep the double play intact, but Mike Trout is not very important right now. Two stolen bases today for the Angels. He's not going, and the pitch is tied again. Now those two stolen bases now. Darvish has allowed each of the last 28 stolen base attempts against him. They've all been successful. Last time the Rangers caught a would-be base stealer against you, Darvish, was in 2013. It was Ben Zobrist, then playing with the Tampa Bay Rays. 
Giovanni Soto was the catcher that day. And this one shot out into right field. So a base hit for Simmons. Trout with good speed heads for third. And the Angels have him on the corners. Credit Andrew to Simmons with a good at bat and a good approach. You Darvish trying to go away with that fastball ended up leaving it up and in. That's not an easy pitch to get to and drive the other way that Simmons did. And Darvish has been on for most of the day. But that's a fastball that got away from him. And then a 2 1 count. And Simmons gets himself a base hit. Gets Brocale out to the mound along with Torinos. 94 pitches for Darvish. Of course, with such a big cushion today, I, I mean, you know, he wants to finish off this sixth inning. I gotta believe you feel comfortable with you, Darvish. You know, of course, Tommy John surgery. I think you're far enough away now. You can push it a little bit. Honest pitch, kind of. I'd be comfortable at least, you know, 105 ish or so. You mentioned what he did his last couple. Now, there hasn't been a lot of high stress pitches. You got to look into that. That's really important. He hasn't had his back against the wall very often but you certainly want to give him an opportunity as much as possible to get through this inning. They've been a right handed batter in the first pitch to him. Misses for a ball. Maven has walked and struck out today. The fans here implored by the scoreboard to make some noise. Trying to keep him engaged is it has been one of those afternoons for the home team. One old pitch, bouncer up the middle. Odor with a nice flip second for one. The relay got him. Double play. And Darvish out of any trouble in the sixth inning. They haven't needed it much this afternoon. A great play here by Rugnet Odor and a really nice flip as well. Watch this here quick, a little backhand. Andrews with a perfect throw. Again, and they've got some good pitching today from you, Darvish. That will go largely unnoticed, though, the way the bats were going today. Hey, Fox Sports Southwest wants you to show your school spirit at a Texas Rangers game. You get discounted tickets for select games throughout the season, and the fans will also get a free Rangers cap in school-specific colors. Go to TexasRangers.com slash UDays for details. Texas Tech Day is coming up soon May 12th so six innings down and we go to the seventh and the Rangers have just pounded lumps on the Angels today Rubnet Odor first pitch swinging and this one will 
settle in there in center field for out number one. And Revere, who has come in to play center field. In fact, a number of changes. Suddenly, this one starting to look and feel like a spring training game. CJ Krohn come into play first base. With Pennington takes over at shortstop. Maybe now out in right field. Let's see. Next pitch sent out there to center field where Revere circles underneath it. Two away. Here we go. Last one for you. Marte now in left field. So there you go. An entirely new looking outfield. And a largely new looking infield. Two away. Here's Joey Gallo. And he takes one down the middle for a strike. Well, the Angels, they lead the division. They've got a half game lead on the Houston Astros coming into play today. And they have had some spectacular late inning comebacks early in the season. Mike Sosha's team with six wins against three losses. One and two now, the count on Gallo. But you you definitely get the sense, now having seen a couple of games and been around here for a few days, that uh, the early season record might belie a little bit what's really going on here. As Gallo hammers one out to right field. Revere and Maven are back, and Maven's going to have room. And he makes the catch. And it's a 1-2-3, top of the seventh inning. They'll stand and stretch at long last here in Anaheim. bottom of the seventh inning and a little reminder the next postgame fireworks show will be Friday April 21st brought to you by Sherwin Williams come on out to the ballpark Rangers facing the Kansas City Royals then stay after the game for a fireworks show you can get your tickets at texasrangers.com or by calling 972 Rangers interesting to see you Darvish back out there for the seventh inning I thought maybe that would have been it did a really nice job of getting that inning ending double play to finish off the sixth inning. I thought maybe 105, but it seems like Jeff Bannister is going to give him a little bit more of an opportunity to go a little deeper, at least than I thought. Well, the bottom of the order coming up, not that you know, you're necessarily talking about a couple of Humpty Dumps. I mean, they, they, they have played well. Ooh, look out. That went over the head of Marte. And Darvish. Looked like he was just as 
surprised by it as Marte was. 100%. 0 and 10 here from you, Darvish. The reaction told you everything that you needed to go that this ball got, that you needed to know this ball got away from him, but you're right. And she almost even hit the bat. I watch you, Darvish, after the fact, you see him immediately concerned, relaying the, at least in body language, that there was no intent. Wow. Frightening moment, nonetheless. Marte will ask for time. Marte, 0 for 2. It's flat out and struck out so far this afternoon. Darvish with 10 strikeouts today. And they're going to say he went around. 1 and 1 on Marte. I've seen this kind of already from Jeff Bannister and kind of watching, which you absolutely love as a starting pitcher. There's been some times where I thought, okay, this guy's probably done. Take him out, finish inning strong, and they'll send him back out there. And you absolutely love that as a starting pitcher. It really instills confidence coming from your manager when it leaves you in there maybe a little bit longer than expected. And it hasn't just been you, Darvish, but some other guys as well. Well, and I do wonder, you know, how much uh, the, the lineup plays with the lead, et cetera, factors into all that obviously it all does but uh, you know yesterday AJ was at a very uh, nominal pitch count all things considered and had the bottom of the order coming up but did not come out for the seventh inning this one popped up out of the shallow center field racing in for it Gomez one away I think that might have had to do with maybe giving Jeffers a clean inning right going to the bullpen at that point. Been some issues. The game was a little bit closer. That might have been it. You, know, you Darvish last year just three times went up over 100 pitches. 110, 107, 100. I'm no mathematician, but I'm going to say he's been a right around 65% strikes today, give or take. Well, you are pretty good. Come on, buddy. Uh, pretty good. Which is a good number, slightly above league average. The big one for me has been the swings and misses that we have seen from you, Darvish, the best of his three starts so far up to this point. 18 swings and misses in this game. 19. Oh, okay. whatever, Dave. I was going to keep it to it. Espinosa, one for two today. Struck out in the second. Singled in the fifth. Darvish trying to get through seven innings here. Right-hander. This one lifted back of short. That's going to be trouble, although Profar able to get in and make the play. Two away. Let's check in again with Dana Larson, another Chevy game break. Thanks, Dana. 8 nothing here. The Rangers, incidentally, we mentioned this at the top today, looking for their first win streak of the season. Hamels with 100 pitches Tuesday. Darvish doing it today. And Perez, a high fly ball to center. Oh, that sun is tough. Gomez, though, is there. A 1-2-3 seventh inning, and you, Darvish, does go seven innings to the eighth. The Rangers leading eight nothing.
Getting all the congratulations in the dugout. High five, some fist bumps. Really nice job by you, Darvish, again, even coming back out for that last inning. But of the day, the 19 swings and misses, a season best, and it was a full arsenal on display today for you, Darvish. Great usage of the fastball. Much better command than we have seen so far through the first two games. And nasty slider is out there as well today. Look at those last three, making four sliders. Make it five sliders <laughs> for strikeouts. You Darvish bringing out the A game today here in Anaheim. Early in the game, we weren't we weren't seeing that slider quite as much, or with the same sort of uh, efficacy, I guess. Is now we go to the eighth inning. Robinson Chirinos, eighth place hitter, and he is two for three today, having a really good day at the plate. He's caught a nice game. Can't ask for a whole lot more. Three RBIs today, giving him six now this year. Count one and two. Daniel Wright has come in a relief today for the Angels. This one sent out toward Mabin, and he misreads it and drops it. Torinos goes to second, and that is a two-base error on Cameron Mabin. And what has been a rather ugly day today for the Angels takes a, a nasty turn for the worse. Well, you think about this. First of all, for Cameron Mabin, starting the game out in left field. Now he's in right, so you're dealing with a completely different sun. That ball was hit really hard as well. Outfielders will tell you the hardest ball to read is the one that is right at you. He got spun around. Ball was stung pretty well. I think the Fairly combination of that and the sun made it a tough play. It's the same sun, right? Yeah, but it's a completely different angle. Oh. You're dealing with it here, especially this time of day, in right field much worse than you are in left. But yes, Dave, there's only I one got sun. you. I got you. Okay. You don't like it. I said different sun. Is that what I said? Is that what well, you he said? He said it was a completely different sun, and That's I, you know, listen. <laughs> I just want to make sure that we're getting it correct. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, Cameron might tell you, no, no, literally, it is a different sun. <laughs> it might have been. He had a little trouble with that one. But a low, 2-0 to Jerickson Profon. Just busting your chops. Oh, I know. So far today, the base hit, the walk. He just struck out. And takes a strike. Well, should the Rangers hold on with this one and end up taking two games here in Anaheim, that, that will be a big lift because you're talking about the team that has been leading the division. And not that you're looking at games back so much this time of year but it does matter when you're playing in the division you do want to beat those teams in your division and we get the Rangers back to a game and a half of the lead it's depending on whatever the Astros do today and there is ball four to Profar so the first two men on again this time of the eighth inning Hey, the first Ozarka online ticket Thursday will be April 20th. Rangers taking on the Kansas City Royals. Tickets for all Thursday home games are half price in Upper Reserve, Upper Box, and Lexus Club Terrace. Go to TexasRangers.com slash specials and use coupon code OZARKA to redeem this offer. Now, now to the top of the order for Carlos Gomez. How about the lead, leadoff man in eight innings so far today? This one popped up into right field. Mayburn fighting two sons out there, <laughs> and he makes the catch. That is incorrect. Oh. oh. He was just dealing with the original son. The new, that's the new one he's dealing with. <laughs> the original was the first few innings, and this is not easy. Sky high here. 
Carlos Gomez as he takes the big hack and just gets under this ball. And actually, that one probably easier because of the height. Right? It's that one that was a little bit lower, the one that Robinson Torino's hit. It was much more of a battle for Cameron Maven. Well, when you, when you have time to get your, your body in a, in a position where you get a, a better angle on it, too. Now you could tell. You could tell when that one was hit off the bat of Torino's. Maven, not that he necessarily wasn't going to be able to make the play, but that it was going to be an adventure one way or the other. Two, a couple of hits today. And the count, one and one. So Torino's on via the error. He's at second. Profar with the walk. I see Chu have a three hit day. I feel like his bat's starting to come around a little bit. Average has been slow to come for him, although he continues to get on base at a better than league average clip. White buries that one, and it is three and one. I think every guy would tell you that they would love to be hitting 320, but it's not always about the batting average. You look at in the case of Shin Chu Chu, how you're taking pitches, are you chasing out of the zone? Is it you know, ugly at bats? And that certainly has not been the case for him. I think he's right where he wants to be, just hoping maybe a few more balls will fall in. And maybe only having balls that are in the strike zone be called, called strikes. <laughs> that is not a strike. So Chu will have to walk again. Here's the 3-2 uh, from right. And Chu fouls it off. Yeah, that's unfortunate. He was he was on his way to first, and rightfully so. And it's important to hitters. You can say, okay, well, you know, it's an 8 nothing game, and you want to kind of keep the game moving. But no, I mean, hitters are grinding. Every at-bat, every at-bat matters. All it takes is a bad one to kind of get you going down the wrong path a little bit. Shin Chu Chu works hard on that strike zone, on that on base percentage. Put a roller to second base. Espinosa short for one on the first for the double play. So the inning is over. Rangers get the first two men on, but can't add it to their lead. of the eighth here in Anaheim and today's State Farm winning combination features one Jose Leclerc who has been absolutely key coming out of the bullpen for the Rangers this season. Four appearances and all have been very good and probably unexpected. Uh, the key Jeff Bannister says is a couple of things. First of all, his demeanor. He compared it to Nomar Mazar. The fact that he uh, nothing faces him. He never gets too high, never gets too low. 
and, and doesn't seem to be phased by any situation. The control was always the issue with Jose Leclerc, so I asked Fanny today, where did this newfound control come from? And he said to me, quote, I'm not going to ask. And I said, all right, if you're not going to ask, neither am I. Guys, there you have it. Yep. Like it. Yep. Leave, leave good enough alone. <laughs> Absolutely. He's been fantastic. It's been a pleasant surprise for the Texas Rangers, the job that Jose Leclerc has done. Not only filling up the strike zone, but doing a nice job in some big situations against some bigger hitters. He has earned the trust of his manager, and that is so critical when you are a reliever. When you don't have the trust of your manager, it's just a matter of time. You get sent down and not find yourself having a place in that bullpen. It is everything. Right now, Jose Leclerc has earned it. He certainly plans on keeping it. Well, we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Angels sitting at the top of the order here. And Mike House Child is the first man called on out of the bullpen and a bouncer to first. Napoli with nice range. Feeds House Child one away. See Mike House Child making his big league debut last Saturday against the A's. Did a nice job. Yeah, he gave up a run, but a couple of strikeouts, no walks. That's what you want to see. Guy gets his first opportunity and never forget it. Yeah, first two reached. They retired the, the last three he faced, including a couple on strikes. A rule five draft pick plucked away from the Houston Astros and much like Delano DeShields was back in 2014. And had to stay on the roster the entire 2015 season. Same true for House Child. His pitch to Calhoun is in there for strike one. Cole Calhoun, one for three. Pardon me, Ben Revere, who came in well, about two innings ago now, but his first at bat of the day. Mike Housechild is, is a really nice story to a 33rd round pick back in 2012. When you get drafted in the 33rd round, a lot of people really expecting you to get to the big leagues. He went unprotected. The Texas Rangers saw an opportunity. It's good to see him getting a chance in the big leagues. Gallo takes care of business down at third. Two quick outs here in the eighth inning. Fans, MLB.TV Premium is back and better than ever. Watch every Adam Market regular season game live on over 400 supported devices. Plus, get a free subscription to at bat premium the number one app for live baseball blackout and other restrictions apply visit mlb.tv for details 400 devices amazing the new devices every day it's man it's crazy how many devices do you think you could name Ooh. and go <laughs> <laughs> cj crone another of these late inning Defensive additions, getting his first at bat of the day. Couldn't hold up. And it is 0-2, so House Chow got Escobar quickly, got Revere to roll out to third. And now has jumped ahead of Crone, 0-2. Right-hander deals, little tapper, first base side. Napoli wants it and will take care of everything himself. A one, two, three, bottom of the eighth for Mike Housechild. This one, all Rangers this afternoon.
yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. And by AT&T Internet. Visit AT&T.com slash keep calm to learn more. That's a beautiful scene right there. Ninth inning in Anaheim. Another good scene. A good scene in that it has the Rangers leading 8 0. Nomar Mazzara will start this ninth inning. Eight runs, 11 hits for the Rangers. They have left six. No runs, five hits for the Angels. They also made three errors and left six. So Nomar going hacking. Have a great at bat his last time around. First pitch, pitch was out of the zone. Sometimes it can be easy when you start to get games like this. We mentioned, you know, since you choose, still fighting the strike, so not trying to give at bats away. I think that's something that comes with a little bit of maturity over time. And it, it's easy in a game like this sometimes to to get a little bit lazy. I'm not saying that was the case with No More, but you get out of your game plan or on both sides of the ball for that matter, whether it be a pitcher or a hitter. Two and one on Mazzara. Hit his third home run of the year back in the third inning. Chases out one. It's two and two. I think Daniel Wright has come in here. And after a very rocky sixth inning, in which he faced eight batters, allowed three runs on three hits, he's settled in a little bit. Stays two and two. And a good game for Nomar. Continues to be among the American League leaders in a handful of offensive categories. Right, runs one a little tight. Full count. Rookie Alasco started the game, went five innings for the Angels. Five runs on eight hits. The payoff pitch. And we'll have another. Wright had just made one start at AAA this year. And three and a third innings. Ten runs. Down in AAA. A slow start to his season, but being in the big leagues is better than giving up ten runs in the minor leagues. There's no argument on that one. High fly ball out to left field. Marte is there, one away. All right, so tomorrow we head to Seattle. We actually head there tonight, but tomorrow we will play the opener of a three-game series against the Mariners. How about that pitching matchup? The teammates from Venezuela, Martin Perez, Felix Hernandez. Much has been made about the relationship of those two guys during the World Baseball Classic and how much that has meant to Martin Perez. That will certainly be a lot of fun watching those two guys get after it. Felix Hernandez is kind of entering an interesting part of his career, as you see like Napoli sky this ball to right center field. Revere takes care of it. Two gone. You know, but for Felix, he gets a little older. The innings start to creep up on him a little bit. You see the three starts versus the Rangers a year ago. Where he had good. some struggles. And the 13 walks is a big one because we just showed what he has done this year. He hasn't walked a hitter yet. 12 strikeouts to no walks. But he's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder because I think he looks around and he's hearing the whispers as the velocity starts to come down a little bit and wondering if we've seen the best of Felix Hernandez and what's left in the tank. And he came in to spring training a little bit stronger. He certainly has been an excellent pitcher in the league, breaking in at 20 years old. 200 plus innings consistently. It's been an absolute workhorse. No postseason action for him. That's no. the other thing with Felix Hernandez that Mariners fans are hoping. The club can get there, not just for him, obviously for them too. But when you have a guy who's been that good for that long, they certainly would like to see him in the postseason. Oh, and they signed him to that extension. I mean, that was a big part of it. So Doors smashes one to first. What a stop by Crone, who will feed right at first, and it ends the inning. Really nice reactions by CJ Crone to steal a hit from Rugnet Odor. To the last of the ninth, we go.
studio today. Very nice. So to the last of the ninth inning, and House Child stays in the game and we'll deal with Albert Pujols. Takes strike one. Now Ryan Rua has come in to play first base. Eight nothing Rangers. Great pitching today from you, Darvish, and the offense rolling. Zero oh and two. Certainly for the post-game show, a lot of good stuff to talk about. Man, digging in on a really good outburst. It's really good, you Darvish. Best start we have seen from him so far in the early season. I'll tell you what, too, we've only seen now the second time we've seen Mike Housechild. I think really straight. Really good movement on his pitches on the fastball. A bit of a lower arm angle. Difficult for him. Right, he pitched last Saturday, a lot of time in between outings. He'll, he'll be in somewhat of a challenging role as far as trying to stay sharp. But you can see what the Rangers liked when they picked him up in the Rule 5 this past offseason. Well, a guy who fills up the strike zone, too, man. I mean, he, he likes to come after hitters. He used eight pitches in the eighth inning to get his three outs. Maybe being a little more careful here with Albert Pujols to do the count. Pujols takes this one into left field. Base hit for the veteran hitter. And the Angels have a man on base here in the ninth. It's not like they haven't had some base runners today. And you go back to the first three innings of the game, in which they stranded four runners in scoring position in those first three innings. That's tough. Dower that Pujols, the eighth. Angel to reach base today on the now six hits and two walks. Interesting, no pinch runner here, I think, for Albert Pujols. Now first pitch to Cliff Pennington is off the plate for ball. Yeah, but here's the thing, right? Number one, they've already made how many defensive right, substitutions? Three. And number two, down by eight runs, uh, you just need station to station. Our team Maldonado might be the only guy left on the bench. Yeah, probably. Four-man bench, if I'm not mistaken, for the Rangers. Well, we've seen Pennington, Crone, and Revere. Yeah. And Maldonado would be it. So where a pitcher is usually salvating well, right now. Yeah, right. Got to do it one time during a situation. Went to pinch ran for a guy in a non-essential game. Jog out to first. I'm super excited. I haven't hit in college or high school, so I had no business ever being on the bases. Juan Samuel's coaching the first base. He looks to me and goes, CJ, heads up. You know, freeze on a line drive. We talked about that the other day, right? Line drive, you freeze. I looked at him. I said, Pop, it's two outs, man. Pay attention. I'm going to tell him <laughs> the great Juan Samuel. I didn't even know how many outs there were. That's beautiful. Did you did you get to advance a base? Or just... Not in that situation. I did as a hitter when I played the National League. They one run scored. Well, the walk to Pennington. The Angels have a couple of base runners in this ninth inning. Here's Cameron Mabin now. I mentioned that really good movement on the fastball and the slider. From House Child. He's a good double play guy. Now, Cameron Maven, obviously, a little bit tougher to double up, but as far as keeping the ball on the ground, he's got the stuff to do it. Maven bouncing that double play in the sixth inning. Really nicely turned double play. Started by Odor at second base, and here comes Doug Brocale. He and Chirinos want to have a word with House Child, make sure. He dials it back in a little bit after a real nice eighth inning. He's giving up a base hit, now a walk. And I'm sure, look, I mean, for House Child, you want to make sure you're keeping your numbers in good shape. Yes, you, you've got an eight run lead. Definitely go after guys. But I've got to believe there is something 
in there too. It's like, yeah, okay, I've got room. I would just assume not give up any runs here. Sure. But you have to be careful in these situations. And even though he's a rookie, he's 27 years old. So he's been around. He understands the game. But it's just not having the runaway train in. Right? A couple of guys get on first and second, nobody out. You know, how do you command big inning? Staying away from the big inning is a big part of pitching and not trying to overdo it and one out at a time. It sounds simple, but that's probably something along the lines of, of what, Doug, what Doug Brokale had said to House Child in this situation, maybe checking in unless he saw something mechanically or whatever he thinks needed to be said. But that's a big part of it. It's just making sure that a younger and experienced pitcher is just the heart rate's not going too fast, not trying to do too much in this situation. Make sure you're trusting your stuff and you know, not afraid of contact. Pujols and Pennington out there. Pitch to Maven. A called strike. It's two and two. Maven didn't like it. That was a strike. A really good movement there on that fastball. Even though it stayed a little flat and horizontal in that situation, 2 1. You don't want to mess around too much. Watch the life here. They're trying to go down away, but look at that ball come back over the plate. A little dangerous because it's up, but you can see that line from Mike Housechild. Maven with a bouncer left side. Dallow to second, and that'll be the only out they get. So they force out Pennington in the middle of the diamond. Pujols to third. And maybe on via the fielder's choice. So then in the third, it's four outs, and it's four ground ball outs for Mike Hauschild. It's going to take a little while, right? He's got to get the experience and everything else that comes along. When you start to see that, you see the sinker, you wonder if he could become for this Rangers bullpen. Right now it's long man, right? That's his role in frequent pitching. But if he can show that consistently and he's comfortable with runners on base, he could turn into that guy that you bring in with runners on base to try to get the ground ball and maybe get you, you know, a double play in the sixth or seventh inning before you hand off the ball to your kind of go-to relievers. He has that kind of stuff. It's, it's definitely in there and certainly a possibility that could be an impact role that he could earn his way into here for the Rangers. Marte hitless in three tries today. And Hostrad also just trying to complete this potential shutout as he runs it in. As a pitcher, how much pressure? Now look, the game appears as if it's all but decided. Mm -hmm. But as a pitcher, when you're in this spot, how much pressure is there from your teammates? Dude, come on. A little bit. There, there could be a little bit there. I mean, you want to put up the zero at the end of the day this is about finishing off the game and getting the run but you got to be careful again don't get so obsessed with trying to prevent Albert Pujols from scoring stay focused on your hitter and get that guy out I'll tell you a funny story when I played with Doug Brokale we were in Detroit we were not a good team at the time and I forgot who we were playing but we the team that we were playing scored a run in every inning right the first eight innings and I had the ninth inning and I go I'm getting ready to leave the mound and, and Doug looks at me and Brooks says hey you know what you got to do uh, he was so he's like they can't score a run in every single inning. They had scored a run in every inning from one through eight. I think we're playing the Pirates actually in early play. And he looked right at me, dead serious, like we're getting crushed. Hey, you know what you got to do. And that man, you got to throw up a zero here. They are not scoring a run on us every single inning. And I only tell that story Dave, because I did give a zero. Of course, I'm not telling that story if I give the run up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy ending on that one. <laughs> That's good. But he, he was. I mean, he straight faced me. He was 100 percent serious. You know what you got to do. 2-2. And the back continues for Marte. Who holds is at third base. And Maven is at first. House Child. Working at a second inning in relief. A nice 6-4-3 here would taste pretty good. But he'll take the strikeout just as well. His first of the afternoon. And so there are two gone in the ninth inning. Good job here keeping this ball below the zone. Good late movement that is down. All right, we mentioned the horizontal kind of fastball that we saw earlier. Two seam fastball to Cameron Maven. But you can pick up on it right away. When Mike House Child is going well, that ball is going to have some, some good depth down. That's what you saw in the swing and miss from Marte. Danny Espinoza, eighth place hitter. 
That's to the left side against the right-hander Mike Hoschild. Still some, still some fans left here. I think they were just chanting, get a run. <laughs> so they're thinking what you were thinking. Now, right now, that's the there's an inner pound gorilla in the room. There's a big zero out there for both sides. Darvish, seven shutout today, ten strikeouts. How's Child? Trying to finish it from there. And this ball lifted deep to right field and gone. Three-run shot by Espinosa. So the Angels avoid that shutout. 8-3 ball game. A tough break here for Mike Housechild who continues to battle, but this ends up being a changeup to the left-hander Espinosa. I mentioned it throughout this series. He is a guy that is going to go hacking. He's got some power. And in a 1-0 situation, yes, you want to throw a strike, but you got to be a little bit careful because you know Danny Espinosa is not afraid to swing the bat and you leave one up and, and he can handle it. And Mike Housechild learned that lesson the hard way. And so now ball one. To Carlos Perez, who is hitless so far today. And the weird thing is, for the Angels, the first eight innings, okay. Generally speaking, the team's six and three. Man, they go crazy in the ninth inning. It's now 16 ninth inning runs for them. Bouncer at third base, little bobble for Gallo, but gets control of it, and that will end the ball game. A three-run homer by Danny Espinosa spoils the shutout, but the Rangers tickled with an 8-3 win and a series win here. In really Canada. nice game today here for the Rangers. Hugh Darvish led the way with his 10 strikeouts over seven innings, and yeah, they fell a little bit short of the shutout, but a win is a win. You'll take it when you can get it, but also the bats today as the Rangers continue to swing it. Carlos Gomez, Nomar Mazzara with the long balls, and the Rangers now finally with back-to-back -back wins here early in the season. Yeah, a little win streak going. Still a whole lot to talk about this afternoon. Dana Larson, Mark McLemore, and David Murphy making his debut back in the studios. We're going to have player and coach interviews, plenty of analysis from this one, stats and highlights, so a lot more yet to come. We invite you to stay with us for all of that.